everybody, and a welcome in for another edition of Black Bears Hockey here on YouTube. Brooks Hill alongside Cole Parenti here tonight, who is finally returned from Christmas break. I think at this point, those kids are spending more time out of school than they are in school. At least it's the way it seems, and uh, you may or may not agree, but I don't remember my break down south being this long over Christmas, but we're excited to have Cole back up here in the broadcast booth tonight. It'll be a rematch game three of four in a row against the Danbury Hat Tricks here tonight. Binghamton splitting last weekend, but getting a favorable result in points as they managed to grab four out of two, excuse me, four to two out of the six available opportunities to snag a point in the standings over in the Danbury Ice Arena. One thing to talk about is that every game this season at the Danbury Ice Arena, Binghamton has secured a point so far. Knock on wood if you need to hearing that, but worth mentioning, and the Black Bears put another streak on the line tonight as they look for their 22nd home game in a row with a point. Binghamton has also not lost in regulation this year on home ice. They have lost in a shootout twice, one time to Danbury and one time to Carolina. As I welcome in my partner Cole Parenti, time to get to Black Bears Rewind, presented by our friends over at the Binghamton Hockey Booster Club, proudly sponsoring Binghamton Hockey for all 51 years. And if you want to join the Booster Club, you can do so at the next Black Bears home game, which is tomorrow night. Behind section four, it's just $10. So, Cole, a favorable result for the Black Bears. I know you were watching back home on Long Island. Nolan Egbert had filled into your position. And one, what did you like from Nolan? And then two, what did you like about the game? Well, Brooks, to be honest, I was afraid you weren't gonna have me back up here. Nolan did a phenomenal job. So thank you to him for filling in for me. And really, if when his hockey career comes to an end, he definitely has a future in broadcasting, Brooks. And it was an enjoyable game, especially after the heartbreak that followed the night before with the Logar goal controversy controversy and all that. But the Black Bears responded. They didn't let that get to them. They came back, they fought. They got the early goal like they did so many times in the Danbury Ice Arena. This time it was Nikita Ivashkin who put them on the board first. Bowden Zinchenko would respond, which Binghamton usually would get, see themselves get out to a bigger lead than just one goal before a Danbury response. But after that, there was no looking back. When Josh Fletcher netted the game winning goal, only the second goal of the game, the captain added one, and then Austin Thompson put one in the empty net to really seal the deal for Binghamton. But anytime you're in that Danbury Ice Arena, no lead is safe, so it was definitely a nervous watch at the end. Yeah, and the Black Bears uh, break their streak of blowing multi-goal leads. No way to really get around that one, folks. Uh, it's been something that was talked about is multiple goals been evaporated against Danbury. So as long as there's time still on the clock, there's always a chance, not only for Danbury, but also for the Black Bears as well. They've been pretty good at responding with some adversity earlier this year. Especially in that Danbury Ice Arena, Brooks, it's a very, very tough arena to play in. They have the fans right on top of you and you can hear them and they're loud and they're passionate and they can get under your skin if you're not prepared for them. So it's almost as if they have seven guys on the ice with the way that home crowd really helps them energize and get back into games. All right, we will take a quick timeout, and we're going to come back. We're going to hear from head coach Brant Sherwood inside the Tully's Coaches Corner right back on the Triple Cities Family Dental pregame show after these messages. Fans, the Black Bears are back tomorrow night at home to take on Danbury once again, but this time it's Mascot Mania. Join Bingo and all of his friends around the concourse pregame and get your picture taken. Puck drop is at 7 o'clock, and we hope to see out. You can grab your tickets online at BinghamtonBlackBears.com. Advancements in new clinical therapies are made possible by heroes like you. Velocity Clinical Research is looking for volunteers to participate in clinical research studies. Compensation is provided. There's a Velocity location near you on Upper Front Street in Binghamton. Learn more about participating and becoming a Velocity Medical Hero today. Oh, the bad you make me think of good things. Good-natured Canadian Pilsner.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Triple Cities Family Dental pregame show. Triple Cities Family Dental always makes your smile their priority. You can visit them by scheduling an appointment at 607 545 4148. Well, for the Black Bears, not too many scratches in our Court Jester Athletic Club injuries and scratches tonight, with Nolan Egbert still on the 15 day IR scheduled to come off this weekend. The only man out of the lineup tonight will be forward Bryce Farrell, who signed his contract earlier this week, a re signing, I might add, since this is the second time that he has signed as well. And then a late scratch for the Danbury Hat Tricks, as it was just announced here in the arena. Nick DiNicola out of the lineup tonight. Colby Audette will slot into his spot. So Colby Audette signed today. Played six games earlier this year with Dan Barry and played one with Baton Rouge at the beginning of the season. So Dina Cola out, Audette in for the Dan Barry Club. We are going to uh, play our coach's interview here and then we will come back after a quick timeout. Now inside the Tully's Coaches Corner, I'm here with head coach Brant Sherwood. And coach, the last game of the first half of the season here with a very familiar foe here. In game 28, how are the Black Bears going to uh, try to get to victory tonight? Um, kind of the same philosophy as last game. We need to be physical with these guys, um, looking for 10 plus hits a period. And uh, just being a little de deliberate with our decision making, especially uh, with puck management, what we're doing with pucks, keeping away from their goaltender, soft chips at the blue line, stuff like that, where we're not turning it over too much and uh, uh, really controlling the play. That's when we're best is when we're in control of the game and we're not we're not chasing or uh, or sitting back. And do you think that the uh, physicality that you guys played with on Saturday night was the predominant reason why you guys were able to uh, skate out with three points with that 4-1 to victory? 100%. I think it quiets them. Like, uh, Danbury coming in their building, they tend to bully you. And um, just the overall environment, but mostly with their play. Um, They are the stronger, tougher team if they want to play that style. And when they play that style against Danbury, I, I really don't see them having a chance. Well, they were able to get three points in the uh, Danbury Ice Arena here, get off that little losing skid in overtime. But now uh, getting ready to turn the calendar for the second half of the season as we've already done it to 2024. Uh, what's one thing that you're challenging the team here in the second half of the season? Scoring shootouts, <laughs> win, win an overtime game. No, we're always just trying to get better day by day. And uh, that means, like, just taking, uh, you know, each day one, one at a time, practice one at a time, one shift at a time, and just really being in the moment and not getting ahead of ourselves and thinking, like, playoffs or any sort of those uh, future thoughts. Like, just stay in the moment, be with it. Let's try to get better every day because – you know, we're we're all in uh, single A hockey together, and you there's always something you can work on. So we can yeah. each get better, myself included. So uh, we're just trying to progress our game uh, month by month. All right, Coach, thank you for your time, and good luck tonight. Awesome. Thanks, Brooksy. That's the voice of head coach, Brant Sherwood. Don't forget, next Tully's Good Times with Coach Show coming up this upcoming Tuesday at 6 p.m. at Tully's on the Vestal Parkway. We'll take a quick timeout. Be back right after these messages. You can experience gig speeds with Greenlight Networks. Our reliable fiber connection provides fast, affordable internet, so you can accomplish more in less time. We're expanding coverage in many places in the southern tier, and we want to be your internet provider. Visit greenlightnetworks.com and click on Check Availability to see if we're in your area. Greenlight Networks, fast, affordable internet in your hometown. For discounted name brand clothing and footwear for the whole family, Homer Men and Boys Store is the place to shop. In business since 1951, our woman-owned family business is known for treating their customers like family. And there's nothing more important to us than backing every sale with friendly service. Come visit us to see the largest pair of jeans in the world. Come see what we have for you. Welcome back, everybody. 
as the Black Bears making their way out of the tunnel. Starters have already been announced here for tonight's game. We're getting to the Thompson and Johnson Equipment Company goaltending matchup in just a little bit. But first, it is going to be the ANC heating and air conditioning starting lineups for the Binghamton Black Bears. It'll be the top line of Tyson Kirkby, Gavin Yates, and Austin Thompson back up with his original line mates from earlier this season. And the Adrian College Bulldogs on the blue line, Dakota Bond and Dan Stone. For Danbury on the other side, it's the top line as well. Corey Cunningham, Johnny Ruiz, and Jacob Ratcliffe on the forward group. And at the blue line, it'll be Jared Yao and Josh LaBelle. Those are tonight's starters brought to you by our friends over at ANC Heating and Cooling. Here we will take a timeout, come back in just a little bit with the puck drop of the first period. Advancements in new clinical therapies are made possible by heroes like you. Velocity Clinical Research is looking for volunteers to participate in clinical research studies. Compensation is provided. There's a Velocity location near you on Old Vestal Road in Vestal. Learn more about participating and becoming a Velocity Medical Hero today. Whether you're a high school or college athlete or a weekend warrior, Guthrie is the area's premier sports medicine program, offering injury evaluation, concussion management, physical therapy, and more. With a full team of providers across New York and Pennsylvania offering same or next day appointments, Guthrie gets you back in the game as quickly as possible. Call the Guthrie Sports Medicine team today at 866-GUTHRIE or learn more at guthrie.org slash sportsmed. Are you ready to take your billiards game to a whole new level? Dragon Billiards Instruction and Pro Shop has everything you need to impress your friends and crush your opponents. American Q Sports certified coach Kim the Dragon Young is now accepting new students. From novices to pros, the Dragon helps you find your best game with in-person or online instruction available worldwide. Need help with stance, stroke, or alignment and aiming? We've got you covered. Looking for advanced cue control techniques and trick shots? No problem. Follow us on Facebook at Dragon Billiards Instruction and Instagram at Dragon Billiards Kim for free daily tips and drills, upcoming tournaments and events, as well as exciting contests and giveaways. Subscribe on Patreon for personalized video content. Visit our online pro shop for the lowest prices on the highest quality pool cues, accessories, and Dragon Billiards gear. Dragon Billiards Instruction and Pro Shop, breathing fire into your game. St. John Squire singing their rendition of the National Anthem, one of the local Cub Scout troops. Also presenting the colors here tonight. So we're getting some ice time as well. Well, Brooks, I gotta say, I'm sitting in my chair in my favorite arena in front of my favorite fans for the first time in a month. It feels good to be back. Yeah, good to have you back. 20 minutes up on the board. First period brought to you by our friends over at Dragon Billiards Instruction. Dragon Billiards, for all your billiards needs, you can learn, shop, and play over at their store in Vestal. Elevating your expectations with tonight's top 
And now time for the Thompson and Johnson Equipment Company goaltending matchup. You're getting a look at Liam Murray on your screen right now from the Danbury Hat Tricks. Liam Murray, one and one on the year. There's Connor on the other side. 398 goals against average and a save percentage of 907. Mac and Animal on the other side, picking up his eighth win of the season last time out. He's 8-0-4. 218 goals against average. That is the top in the FPHL and a 928 save percentage. He is second in the league in that category. Well, Brooks, we came into the season, the Black Bears had three goaltenders on even ground. We didn't know who was gonna be the full-time starter, who was gonna get the most starts. It started with Nolan Egbert. Sam Levecchi has pitched in, but it looks like Connor McAnanima has settled into the role of being the number one for this Binghamton Black Bear team. And Liam Murray, the piece coming over in the Dim Dimitri Kuznetsov trade with Baton, with Mississippi, I should say, and we're underway. So Dan Barry with first touch of the puck, a delayed off sides as it hopped over the stick of Ratcliffe, so they're giving it right back over to Binghamton. Austin Thompson on the high four check right now is F1. F2, Tyson Kirkby came in to lend a hand. And now Cunningham steers one on the backhand that's blocked away by Gavin Yates. Picks up the puck behind his own net and gets it over to Thompson. Thompson tried to go all the way across the ice for a pass, but instead Ruiz is going to be able to get the puck below the Black Bears net. And the forwards for Danbury and defenseman for that matter as well will go off on a line change. So Abdella fumbled with it a little bit in his own end. A high aerial flip just underneath the video board. Allows Danbury to come into the offensive side. Schultz throws around to Woolley, but Danbury maintains control of the puck from the blue line, knocked down by the elbow of Weber, who flies out of the zone with Yates. He's gonna join this offensive rush. Yates goes out wide, outside the dots, tries to shelf it, and it deflects into the CPR safety net. In case you have tech that got wrecked, check out CPR cell phone repair right in downtown Binghamton. Well, I think the name of the game here for Binghamton was to be physical. Just a minute and 10 seconds in, Jake Schultz, who you see on your screen right now, threw a big hit. Nikita Ivashkin threw a hit right by the blue line. So Binghamton upping the physicality early against this Danbury team. Schultz fires a slap shot just wide off the far post. Almost held in by Weber at the blue line. Schultz and Weber played two games together with the, against the Motor City Rockers last year while the Black Bears were up in Michigan. And since... Schultz has returned in his three games, has a point in every game so far. Um, credited with a goal that probably should not be his, but he would still have a point on that play. It should be an assist, and it should be Ivoshkin's goal, but that's neither here nor there. Nikita has enough of those, Brooks. Let's let uh, Jake try to catch up, and I think Jake Schultz with Dan Weber is kind of like having Zidane Ocharo with your younger defenseman, an uh, experienced veteran who has some ECHL experience now with a younger guy in Dan Weber who's just in his rookie season. Uh, Dent interrupting a pass from Schultz that keeps the puck in front of the two benches. And Cunningham pushed off by Ivashkin. Johnny Ruiz now with Ratcliffe two on one. Ruiz goes for a top shelf shot over the blocker of McAnanima, but it goes off the glass. Ivashkin will pick it up at his own blue line and have it wrap off his stick by Josh LaBelle, who is still wearing uh, the full visor or the full bubble, if you're familiar with hockey slang. He had 27 stitches after the Friday night contest in Danbury, played the next night. Dakota Bond was also injured in the same game. He is back to wearing the half visor that you see across the rest of the ice. I know those bubbles tend to fog up, Brooks, so we'll see if that has any effect. I know that today's players definitely have a better experience of handling it than they used to. Steered shot by Yalwell wide of McAnanima's net. He puts it into a safe spot behind. And the third line will get their first shift of the night for Binghamton. This is Andrew Logar, Don Oliveri, and Josh Fletcher with Thomas Ray as the extra forward tonight. Oliveri still going to be out there on that first power play unit, no doubt. But switching Oliveri into the third line spot to keep that scoring depth balanced as best they can. Yates will turn this puck over, and Zinchenko throws it on target for McAnanima, who corralled it. And we'll pause for a whistle with 16.43 left to go here in the opening period. Well, Oliveri must be a coach's dream, being able to play forward and defense at such a high level. I expect to see him slot into that extra forward a little bit later on in the season, Brooks, just to give Coach Sherwood the flexibility. If he needs an extra forward, he can throw him out there. But if he needs an extra defenseman, 
he could also throw him out there. So I expect to see that come later on in the season near crunch time. A tip pass from Thompson intercepted by Dan Barry. They get that puck back into the corner. Rizinchenko gets pressure, nicely reversed around the wall by Walters and Bond fanned on a cross-ice pass for Thompson. Noticing that trend a little bit early here in this one, the cross-ice pass is not going the way that Binghamton would like them to. So Abdella right over for Cunningham, had to be careful not to play that puck as Dan Barry was changing their forwards. And Tetro now will wrap it around the wall. Bond holds it in at the blue line. Not once, but twice, and throws it over to the open spot. Walters had already backtracked. I believe he's in the process of changing, but we have a whistle as it was touched by a high stick, I believe. And this is going to come back out into the neutral zone. Yeah, Tomer tipped that one right up high with his stick and then into his glove. So he tried to play it off, but the ref on this far side had a very good look at it. Looked like a high stick, called it a high stick, and now we'll have a face off outside the zone. So Jesse Anderson wins this face off to the wall. Ivashkin with some good wing play, gets it back to the defenseman, who pass it around the horn and get it back behind the Danbury net. The only win for Liam Murray this year is against the Binghamton Black Bears, and in fact his only loss this year against the Binghamton Black Bears. Goalie of record in only two contests so far this year. Cunningham steals a pass from Binghamton and he goes out wide. Weaver does a good job of brushing the puck off of his tape. And that'll allow Jesse Anderson to pull a 200-foot breakout. Gets it up to Ivoshkin at the red line. Ivoshkin plays it over to Smith. A wide shot went off the stick of Brown. And gets thrown around the kick plate all the way back out to Liam Anderson. As the defense are still in the process of line changing right now. Ivoshkin crossing over the blue. Tries to cut to the middle of the ice. And read like a book, John Scully knew what was coming. Separates Ivoshkin from the puck. Danbury comes back the other way, but this play is offside, sending us to our first timeout of the night. 14.58 left to go, still searching for the game's first goal. Only one shot aside so far. Back with you after this quick timeout here on YouTube. Jersey, bring us the hitties! Yeah! All right, I got the hitties. Baby. <laughs> a win like that calls for a real celebration. Oh, yeah. I have one on Getting your hands on an all-new CF Moto side-by-side -side or four-wheeler is now easier than ever at ExciteMotorsports.com. Purchase your next power sports vehicle with our new, easy, and quick online buying experience. Browse inventory on ExciteMotorsports.com. Buy. Get approved for financing and e-sign online right from your phone. Ride. Have your new power sport vehicle delivered to your home the next day at no extra charge. Browse. Buy. Ride. Fun starts here at Excite Motorsports. Welcome back, everybody. First period brought to you by our friends over at Greenlight Networks. Here are five minutes gone here. Only two shots total on goal. Third line out for both teams. Harwell and Fletcher do battle with each other. And Fletcher will pull this puck back. Liam Anderson, though as his pass impeded, and Yao with the takeaway for the hat trick, centers up McKittrick, a one-timer. And Mackinanema, down in the butterfly, makes the save. They gotta tighten it up a little bit in the neutral zone. Too many passes, fumbling and bumbling around Brooks. Too many tipped passes by both teams, I should say. It seems like no one is willing to give up that neutral third. Here you take a look on your screen. Right from McKittrick into the bread basket of Macananama. He's going to stop those 99 out of 99 times. So Danbury takes that whistle and puts the first unit out there. I should say first line, Johnny Ruiz, Corey Cunningham, and Jacob Ratcliffe. This line's been red hot. A lot of these guys on multiple point streaks and goal scoring streaks. Cunningham being one of those players here will play it back to LaBelle. And he will knock it down low for Ruiz, pinned up against the wall by Fletcher. That's a veteran against Rookie in 19 versus 81. Shot takes a funny bounce off of the plexiglass. Makes its way back in front of Mackinanema's net, but it's cleared back out by Oliveri. 
Quick re-entry though for Danbury as they chip and charge. Everybody but Cunningham will go off on a line change and Liam Anderson will throw it back over to Tetro. Had it hop underneath his stick, nullifying any chance at icing. And Binghamton keeps his puck in play. Linesmen and referees communicate with each other. No icing on that play. And now Kirkby from his own blue line gets it over to Yates. Flying in with some speed. Kirkby's pass or a shot couldn't tell. Blocked by Harwell. And McKittrick saw the hit coming from Dakota Bond. Pulls up and leads to a turnover for Binghamton. As Cole mentioned, Danbury not giving Binghamton that middle third. And that's why the Black Bears only have one shot on goal so far here through the first six minutes and change. Yeah, but Danbury also only has two, so it doesn't seem like either team is giving each other that middle third. I would expect they have a little bit more of a feeling out of each other after playing two straight, but it looks like they're still trying to get a wind of what the other wants to do. Turnover behind the Danbury net. Yates playing it off the wall to Dan Stone with 11 points this year. Stone gives it right back to Yates in a little bit of give and go. Yates passed off to Woolley, and it's stolen away. Two on one coming the other way. Woolley over to McKittrick. McKittrick trying to outweigh the defender. Down low behind the net, and it's overskated by Woolley. Coming back the other way for the Black Bears, two on two with Kirkby and Thompson, but this play is off sides with 12.45 left to go. Well, it was a great stick from Dakota Bond. He took away any sort of chance for Daniel McKittrick to get that puck anywhere off his stick. He just stuck with him, stuck with him, stuck with him, and eventually McKittrick ran out of space and ran out of opportunities to do anything. Face off one back by the hat tricks into their own end, and Colby Audette playing his seventh game of the season for the hat tricks, eighth overall. Did start the season with the Baton Rouge Zydeco. On opening night for the Zydeco, he did have an assist, but that's his only point of the year. Somebody who has a lot of points is Connor Smith, but he lost the handle on the puck, and sensing the pressure was coming, Liam Murray decides to settle it down. The offensive zone face off for the Black Bears. Yeah, smart move by Murray just to melt that one down. Let's take a look here on the Heinz Energy replay. A nice cross ice enter. I should say a nice enter through the middle of the zone, and Connor Smith just losing the handle at the last possible second. Soychewski wins that face off against Jesse Anderson, and it's floated back into the Binghamton end. Smith failed on a clear. One pass, almost tipped into the Black Bears' net by their own man. Scully fakes the slap shot down low off the glove of Mack and Anima. His best save early on here, and perhaps the game's best shot. Scully fires for a tip from Stoichewski, didn't get it. Ivoshkin gets over to the rebound, plays it off the glass for Smith, but Steve Brown gets in the way, giving it right back to the hat tricks. Puck is bouncing real weird off the ice to start this game, Brooks. It's, uh, it's definitely jumping over player sticks and jumping around, so they got to adjust to that and adapt, but I expect that to get a little bit easier as the ice gets a little choppier. McAnanama melts it down. Got another faceoff coming up to his right. In the defensive zone, Binghamton not allowed to change as that was thrown in from behind the red line. Fletcher pulls this one back. Ratcliffe over to it first, though. He battles JT Walters for a loose puck. Thomas Rays, the extra forward tonight, getting his first shift. One touch passing from Ratcliffe is blocked by Walters. Off the stick of Cunningham. Ratcliffe playing it back down low. We got a penalty coming up. And JT Walters, I believe, gonna be the guilty party. And slashing is the call. Second straight game for JT that he's taken a slashing penalty. And the Northeastern Striping Corporation penalty kill is making its way out onto the ice pole. Yeah, this is the second best penalty kill in the league right here, the Black Bears, second best in both power play and penalty kills, so really getting things done on special teams. They'll go against a Danbury hat trick power play that has not been great this season. They were not great last season, but they've started to pick it up as of late. So Binghamton needs to lock it down because they've given up too many power play goals to this Danbury power play. So on Saturday night, Danbury's power play did not score in the 4-1 losing effort, however, on Friday night's game, they did go one for three, scoring on their second man advantage of the night. Big open ice collision as Dan Stone loses his stick and helmet. A 2 on 0 is denied by Mack and Anima, and perhaps the post as well. Binghamton gets a replacement player on the ice in the form of Jake Schultz. And now Cunningham slows it down. After all that hoopla, LaBelle 
Sauces it over to Ruiz. Top of the umbrella. Throws it on target for Mack and Anima. Slapped, but not cleared by Schultz. Schultz not too happy with himself, knowing that he could have put that one right down Broadway. Gone through the middle of the ice. Ruiz holding back to the top of the umbrella. Bell fires looking for a tip. Rebounds available. And two hat tricks players fan on opportunities. Cunningham and McKittrick come up empty handed right on the doorstep with nobody between them and McAnanima. Strong in his crease is Connor McAnanima to start this game off. A nice kind of energy he seems to be feeding off his last win against these Danbury hat tricks. Connor Woolley gets to the blue line, throws it in cross corner, touched by McAnanima trying to slow it down. What, Stoichevsky behind the net, surveys his option, plays it back up to the blue line. Woolley and Yao will trade places with each other. Yao holding for the wrist shot, doesn't like it, played it across, and a one-timer blocked by Schultz. That was Chase Harwell. The shot denied by McAnanima. He's getting his money worth now. Danbury now out shooting Binghamton 6-1, and shorthanded, Black Bears come the other way. Smith, a toe drag, partially blocked. And Yao takes a hit from Connor Smith behind the play as he lost his sticks in the process. Yao makes his way over to the bench. And now Anderson coming back shorthanded for Binghamton. Anderson, power move, tries to float it up to the front of the net. It's denied. Now Tetro grabs a loose puck around the kick plate. Floated into the neutral zone. Oliveri's one on three. Oliveri fans on a wrister. Puck still behind the Danbury net. Penalty time is up. Black Bears get back to five on five. Northeastern Striping Corporation is one for one. I think that elbow of Connor Smith accidentally came up a little high on Jared Yao. He looked to be holding his face and it looked like maybe even trying to find all his teeth. But these guys are tough. He'll probably get out there for his next shift. Troy Harwell matched up against John Fletcher, excuse me, Josh Fletcher. Got a pile up. As you go picture in picture on that Heinz Energy replay, Ray will pick it out. Walter slaps it over for Liam Anderson, whose only play is to wrap it in down low. Oliveri behind the net. Too soft of a pass, and it's a turnover. Leads it over to Zinchenko. Zinchenko goes one on two, but no quarter given at the blue line by Anderson. Walters picks up the loose puck. Reverses it around for Anderson. Oliveri takes a look at the bench, and he will start to make his way over there. Gavin Yates comes on to take his spot. Anderson at the red line, slaps it in. Takes a hit from Cunningham. Crowd doesn't like it, but they play on. Schultz plays it back over to Weaver. Binghamton trying to gain some ground in the neutral zone. And that pass from Yates through the legs of a defender coming all the way back. 7.25 left to go. Binghamton with just three shots on goal this period. Yates flies in. Nifty little toe drag, power move to the front, out waits the goalie and scores. Right on cue, Gavin Yates breaks the ice and the Black Bears have a one nothing lead. Oh wow, Gavin Yates, puck on a string right there. Just when you think he's gonna shoot it, he waits, he waits, he waits, he waits, and Brooks, you know what he did after that? He waited some more, and he beat Liam Murray on the stick side, here it is. He comes into the zone, it's a one-man effort, inside out, comes around Murray, nothing he can do. Desperation tried to get that with the stick, but he couldn't, he goes right by almost everyone. He goes right by Harwell, he goes right by Brown. Nothing the Dan Barry defense could do about number 12 in black and green as he collects his ninth goal of the year. There we go. I got too many papers in front of me, Brooks. All right, I've watched him coming in looking for more. Middle of the ice wasn't open. Smith being physical, a shot that Murray didn't think he saved. Still available, and now Smith going one on three. Back up to Bond, plays it over for Anderson. Binghamton trying to put on the pressure here and score in bunches. Smith shot blocked by Yao. And Ivashkin has it below the net. Indirectly off the wall for Stone, or Rister. Blocked by Harwell. And onto the stick of Connor Woolley. 
So LaBelle fires a long wrister that's easily steered into the corner by Mack and Anima. Tipped back out into the neutral zone. So five shots now for Binghamton on target, seven for Danbury. But where it matters the most, Binghamton leads by one. Another game with Binghamton and Danbury where Binghamton jumps out to the early one goal lead. We'll see if this one follows the script as the other three is. We're going to have a penalty here coming up against Danbury. Yep, Jesse Anderson draws an interference call. And we will tell you all about it when we come back. Black Bears headed to the Henny Hart Seltzer power play when we get back from commercial. Advancements in new clinical therapies are made possible by heroes like you. Velocity Clinical Research is looking for volunteers to participate in clinical research studies. Compensation is provided. There's a Velocity location near you on Upper Front Street in Binghamton. Learn more about participating and becoming a Velocity Medical Hero today. Toyota Trucks, let's go places. That's our friend Ben with his new friend Michelle celebrating her birthday tonight at the Black Bears game as she gives the crowd a let's go Black Bears chant. Colt Bowden Zinchenko sitting down for two minutes at least for interference and Binghamton with an opportunity to extend their lead right here on the power play. Yeah, this would be a big time to score. Oliveri slots into the defensive slot here. Double that lead up going in to the break. Let's see where it goes from here, Brooks. So Oliveri already with one shot this power play. Kirkby with another, that one wide. Yates will settle it down and now he plays it into the bumper for Logar. High riser just above the glove of Liam Murray. Danbury just too passive on their penalty kill, not going out and forcing Binghamton to give up the puck. As I say it right there, Ratcliffe takes it away, but they're letting Binghamton get any pass they want. They don't even have a strong clear there because they'll only get one guy off the ice. Looks like they're going to be content to let Binghamton shoot from further distances. They don't want the easy tip in or anything near the blue paint, at least on first impression. We'll see if that changes as the game goes along. 50 seconds into the Haney Hard Seltzer power play. Yates flies back in again. Tries to use the exact same move, and this time Murray got his toe to it. And that'll allow Danbury to clear off the glass and out. Oliveri picks up the loose change. And looks like the second unit in the process of making their way onto the ice. Logar carries over the blue line, gets it set up for Binghamton. Takes a look over at the bench, sees new people coming on. Oliveri fires one timer blocked by Harwell. Plays it back over to Schultz. Logar will go off for a line change. Smith holds. Plays it off the wall, and Thompson couldn't get over to it. Yao slaps it around. Lucky bounce for the Black Bears as it goes off the skate of the linesman, who went aerial trying to get out of the way. Ivashkin circling. Plays it off the wall for Smith. Bonds calling for it, top of the umbrella, but instead Smith throws a wrister into the chest of Murray, and here hang on. And that'll send us to the under five media timeout. Still 10 seconds left to go on the Haney Hard Seltzer power play. We'll see what they can do with it when we come back. Fans, the Black Bears are back tomorrow night at home to take on Danbury once again, but this time it's Mascot Mania. Join Bingo and all of his friends around the concourse pregame and get your picture taken. Puck drop is at 7 o'clock, and we hope to see out. You can grab your tickets online at BinghamtonBlackBears.com. Advancements in new clinical therapies are made possible by heroes like you. Velocity Clinical Research is looking for volunteers to participate in clinical research studies. Compensation is provided. There's a Velocity location near you on Upper Front Street in Binghamton. Learn more about participating and becoming a Velocity Medical Hero today. All about you make me think of good things. Good 
natured Canadian pilsner. Welcome back, everybody. Black Bears hockey on YouTube. 420 left to go in the first period. 10 seconds left to go in the Henny Hard Seltzer power play that has had some good shots from further distances, but they've been looking for that easy one near that blue paint, and they just haven't found the space yet. Yeah, they just, they're just getting the shots out, like you said, Brooks, out up here in the slot. Danbury giving it to them, but no tips in front. Nobody taking away Liam Murray's eyes. He's able to just get it right in his bread basket. And right on cue, Bond puts one into the chest, takes six seconds off the clock. Bowden Zinchenko up and ready at the penalty box door. Well, he's got a couple more ticks left to go here before he is released. Don't know if you saw it last night in the National Hockey League as teams jockey for. I got an interesting story about the penalty box and players coming out here that we're talking about that in the next whistle. Bond holds it in while the puck was on the blue line. That is allowed, and Smith throws it back out into the neutral zone. So if you were watching the Buffalo Sabres game last night, Rosmus Dahlin was in the penalty box serving a two-minute minor. Buffalo kills the penalty, and as the penalty box door is open, the puck comes right in front to Dahlin to go for a breakaway. Dahlin touches the puck while he's still standing in the penalty box and then the referees call a delay of game penalty because you cannot play the puck from inside the penalty box. It was on his stick, but both of his feet still in the box, and that is against the rules. You don't see it probably not even every season. I've never seen it. I think I've seen it one other time with the Boston Bruin game, Brooks. It's just the same as if you have your feet on the bench. You're not in the area of play. Hockey is a very unique sport where there's no out of bounds to speak of as we're going to get another penalty here against the Danbury Hattricks. It looks like it's going to be Johnny Ruiz off this time. Johnny Hockey will take a seat down in the box. And, uh, Brooks, I don't think he'll be touching the puck without both feet on the ice if it ends that way. No, so while we were talking about penalty box, put it out into the ethos, and Danbury takes another penalty. This time it's at 16-30. Johnny Ruiz, captain of the Hattricks, sits down. And... Taking a look at it from the angles. Woo! I could see why Ruiz was a little frustrated. Smith holding outside the dots, throws a wrister. That's absorbed by Murray. And Anderson knocked down to the ice by Brown, trying to clear a screen in front of his goalie. Yeah, it was a good move by the Black Bears. Their first power play didn't get much cooking in front of Liam Murray, taking away his eyes. Jesse Anderson goes right to that dirty area right in front and tries to make it so that Liam Murray's life is just that much harder with a Jesse Anderson in the way. So Anderson wins his face off back. It splits Bond and Schultz who are paired up on this unit as defensemen Smith, Ivoshkin, and Jesse Anderson are the forward. So it's a second forward line in a combination on the blue for right now. Smith throws this in where Anderson comes out to play it. Liam Murray tries to steer it. Ivoshkin squeaks it through the legs of the Danbury goaltender. It's not going to be a pretty one, but it all counts the same. Nikita Ivoshkin picks up a power play goal, his 17th of the year, and the Black Bears double up their lead on Danbury. Well, this all starts with a beautiful pass from Connor Smith. He looks like he's just dumping the puck, but Jesse Anderson shot out of a cannon comes and saves that one, sends it back in. Liam Murray came to play it, didn't get himself back into position in time. Connor Smith could have looked to take the shot at the awkward angle, instead gives it right to Nikita, puts it through the legs of Murray and it just squeaks through, Brooks. And like I love to say, they don't ask how, they just ask how many. Danbury will shoot this puck off the wall and Mack and Anima will settle it down. Let's hear what Frank has to say. Season on the power play. Assistant number 26, Connor Smith, and number 77, Jesse Anderson. Time of the goal 17.02. That's Ivoshkin. So Ivoshkin picks up his 17th at 17.02 as that puck is blocked from LaBelle by his own teammate. Brooks, I expect Kirkby to score today just because anytime Ivoshkin comes and catches him for the lead, Kirkby responds right back to give uh, to take the lead right back from him. Ivoshkin. As Cole said, now tied with Tyson Kirkby as another penalty is coming up. This time it's against Binghamton. Mackinanama makes that save standing up, and another Black Bear headed to the sin bin here. 222. 
Now, we were going to be guilty of the tripping infraction, I believe. But one thing worth mentioning, Tyson Kirkby on a five-game goal-scoring streak, longest of his Black Bear tenure. So looking to see if Kirkby can get in the goal column here tonight. But now probably going to be focused on killing off this penalty and heading to the locker room up two. Telling you, Brooks, he's going to extend it to six. Like I said, anytime Nikita catches him, Kirkby comes right back to take the lead. So Black Bears power play, as Cole mentioned earlier in the night, 85% on the year. Cross-ice pass for Ruiz is fanned on. Second in the league, 85% is LaBelle's booming slap shot. I think rose up a little bit too high from a kicker to get a tip on it. So Dan Barry gets set back up on the power play. LaBelle starts to creep his way in inside the dots. McKittrick from Ruiz down low. The captain from Dan Barry gets a shot on McAnanamaw, a rebound. Squirts back into the blue paint, and McAnanamaw steps on top of it. Yeah, Binghamton's killed off their last nine, not last, I'm sorry, they've killed off 99 power plays this season. They stand at around 85%. That's second best in the FBHL. And it's a nice place to sit when you can take your penalty kill and your power play and add it up to over 100. LaBelle plays it off the wall for Cunningham and another penalty coming up. Uh, Dan Stone not even going to look at the official there. And Stone will be given an escort to the penalty box. And the Black Bears are now going to be five on three on the bad side of it. Even worse, Brooks, it's two defensemen sitting down in the box. I wonder if Coach Sherwood will go to Don Oliveri to serve as an extra defenseman now that they're only down to four, only having Liam Anderson, JT Walters, Dakota Bond, and Jake Schultz. So this is a five on three. Dan Stone guilty of the penalty. At 18-21. So two tripping penalties in a row for the Black Bears. Not a recipe for success. Well, we'll see what the Northeastern Striping Corporation penalty can do when they're really tested. Bond tries to flutter this out, and it hops over the skate of LaBelle, and Josh Fletcher shot out of a cannon, comes in on the forecheck. I thought he was going to go all the way to the goalie, but decides to pull back and go off for a line change, get a fresh body onto the ice. LaBelle should have played that with his stick instead, went for the skate blade, and Brooks, that skate blade is way narrower than that stick head, so... A miscue by LaBelle leads to an offensive zone exit. LaBelle fires, blocked by Schultz. Binghamton tries to clear, squirts past LaBelle, who could not seal the wall. And Binghamton has 23 seconds left to go on the bad end of a five on three. You're getting a good look at Jacob Ratcliffe from the corner. Now cuts across all three lines, trying to set Danbury up for this man advantage opportunity. Danbury only with four players on the ice temporarily, and now Connor Woolley comes on. So they wasted a couple seconds there, but now Woolley has it on his stick, blocked by Liam Anderson. First man's out of the penalty box, it's Dan Weber. Three defensemen on the ice for the Black Bears. Woolley gets around Weber on first try, now back up for Harwell. So difficult, Weber's playing a winger position right now for Binghamton as a forward. Ratcliffe over to Harwell, shot blocked by Schultz. He takes the peak, plays it out. Doesn't get it deep, but Ratcliffe can't hold it at the blue line. The horn sounds, and the crowd gets up, saluting the Black Bears as they kill off a very long portion of a five on three, but they'll still be on the penalty kill to start the second period. Dan Stone's still got 21 seconds left to serve. Yeah, but they'll get a nice rest in the locker room, be ready to go, and what a veteran move by Jake Schultz. He clicked his head up, looked at the clock, and turned back instead of trying to force that puck into a spot that it can be turned over. So that's that East Coast Hockey League experience that Jake Schultz brings back to this team after his stint in Worcester. So... 2-0 after the first period. Goals by Gavin Yates and Nikita Ivashkin. We have another edition of the Excite Motorsports Intermission Report coming up, everybody, where we have the stat sheet, the highlights, and a look at what's going on on the out-of-town scoreboard tonight. We're going to take a short time out. Be back with you in just a moment. So don't go anywhere, folks. Excite Motorsports Intermission Report coming up right after this. You can experience gig speeds with Greenlight Networks. Our reliable fiber connection provides fast, affordable internet, so you can accomplish more in less time. We're expanding coverage in many places in the southern tier, and we want to be your internet provider. Visit greenlightnetworks.com and click on Check Availability to see if we're in your area. Greenlight Networks. 
fast, affordable internet in your hometown. For discounted name brand clothing and footwear for the whole family, Homer Men and Boys Store is the place to shop. In business since 1951, a woman-owned family business is known for treating their customers like family. And there's nothing more important to us than backing every sale with friendly service. Come visit us to see the largest pair of jeans in the world. Come see what we have for you. Welcome back, everybody. Excite Motorsports Intermission Report. We got a intermission shootout going on here with some friends on the ice. Each contestant looks like they're going to get five shots here. Binghamton leads two to nothing after the end of the first period. Shots on goal, 12 for Binghamton, nine for Dan Barry. Started off very slow here in the first five minutes. We only had three shots combined. Uh, between the two sides, but a better opportunity to finish in the final 10, excuse me, in the final 15 minutes as the shots for both teams kind of picked up a little bit. Got a lot of penalties here in the tail end or the second half of that opening frame, but Binghamton leads two to nothing. They are one for two on their power play. Danbury is 0 for two. And they are have 21 seconds left to go in their third opportunity of the night. Yeah, Binghamton special team really doing the job well. One goal across, and now they will have to kill off the last 21 seconds here on the Dan Stone minor. And like you said, Brooks, when he happened, Dan Stone knew it. He didn't even want to look at the referee. But a strong period after a feeling out process in the beginning. Binghamton came back after trailing in shots, and they lead 2 nothing going to the second period. But a familiar spot, Brooks leading against the Danbury Hattricks. No lead is safe. Oh, yep, so we'll see how the Hattricks respond. They've done so very well this season. Not so much on Saturday, but second and third period was very good for the Black Bears in both of those games. We hope those stories and traditions remain true. So, Columbia Mutual Life stat sheet, we already kind of talked about it, but I'll run through it quickly again for everybody just joining us. Shots on goal, 12 to nine favor in Binghamton. The score where it matters the most is two to nothing in favor of the Black Bears as well. Danbury power play 0 for two. They still have some change left on their third when we get back to hockey. And Binghamton is one for two. Ivashkin with his 17th goal of the season. It was the second goal of the period, and it came on the second power play of the night as well for the Black Bears. Columbia Mutual Life been protecting families in the Southern Tier for over 140 years, and we thank them for doing so each and every Black Bears game. We're going to take a timeout, come back with more on the Excite Motorsports Intermission Report right after this. Are you ready to take your billiards game to a whole new level? Dragon Billiards Instruction and Pro Shop has everything you need to impress your friends and crush your opponents. American Q Sports Certified Coach Kim the Dragon Young is now accepting new students. From novices to pros, the Dragon helps you find your best game with in-person or online instruction available worldwide. Need help with stance, stroke, or alignment and aiming? We've got you covered. Looking for advanced cue control techniques and trick shots? No problem. Follow us on Facebook at Dragon Billiards Instruction and Instagram at Dragon Billiards Kim for free daily tips and drills, upcoming tournaments and events, as well as exciting contests and giveaways. Subscribe on Patreon for personalized video content. Visit our online pro shop for the lowest prices on the highest quality pool cues, accessories, and Dragon Billiards gear. Dragon Billiards Instruction and Pro Shop, breathing fire into your game. When you care about something, you take care to protect it. The family that depends on you and the future you're planning for them. You'll have your own college stories too someday. 
With sound advice, smart strategies, and a broad variety of life insurance options, Security Mutual can help provide for the people you care about and also help you reach your financial goals. It's a sound plan. The time to start thinking about college and retirement is now. Security Mutual Life, the company that cares. Get access to exclusive player events, monthly parties, and road trips to away Black Bears games. This is what you get when you become a member of the Binghamton Black Bears Booster Club. Stop by the Booster Club table behind Section 4 at the next Black Bears home game, pick up a 50-50 ticket, and sign up to join for just $10. Stay up to date on the Booster Club by liking their Facebook page, facebook.com slash Binghamton Black Bears Booster Club. Monthly meetings with players, road trips, and a whole lot of fun when you join the Black Bears Booster Club. Advancements in new clinical therapies are made possible by heroes like you. Velocity Clinical Research is looking for volunteers to participate in clinical research studies. Compensation is provided. There's a Velocity location near you on Upper Front Street in Binghamton. Learn more about participating and becoming a Velocity Medical Hero today. Wanting more Black Bears hockey? Season tickets are on sale. Visit BinghamtonBlackBears.com or call the front office at 607-722-7367 to learn more. You can experience gig speeds with Greenlight Networks. Our reliable fiber connection provides fast, affordable internet so you can accomplish more in less time. We're expanding coverage in many places in the southern tier, and we want to be your internet provider. Visit GreenlightNetworks.com and click on Check Availability to see if we're in your area. Greenlight Networks, fast, affordable internet in your hometown. Welcome back, everybody, to the Excite Motorsports Intermission Report. Excite Motorsports, browse, ride, and buy free next day delivery to New York and Pennsylvania. You can visit them online anytime at excitemotorsports.com, or if you're here locally in the area, you can visit them at their storefront in Vestal, 408 Front Street, here in New York. 2 nothing is where we stand after the first period, but we need to find out what's going on across the FPHL with our first look at the out-of-town scoreboard here tonight. So, I'll let Cole take it away. Cole, what's going on across the league here on Friday? Well, if you're watching, you know here in the Viz, the Binghamton leads Danbury 2-0. But if you had a hour west of here to Elmira, Watertown and the River Sharks are knotted up at one. River Sharks now with Kyle Powell on the back end, former Black Bear. If you head to the Virginia Mountains, they're just getting underway, so it's 0-0. Same as if you head to Winston-Salem where Carolina and Mississippi are knotted up at zero. So Withville and Columbus at zero, Carolina and Mississippi at zero. And if you head to Michigan, the Battle of Michigan, Port Huron and Motor City also knotted up at zero, zero. But those last three games all just getting underway in the last 10, 15 minutes. Thank you, Cole. That's a look at our out of town scoreboard. We will update you. As the night goes along, probably the next time will be during the Excite Motorsports second period intermission report here as the Zambonis make their final passes. Here giving us a fresh sheet of ice here for the middle period. Teams will be dealing with the long line change and feel like a broken record explaining how important it is for the long line change. But until it doesn't really become an issue so often, I will probably continue to still bring it up. So we'll see how the teams respond here with the long change to the door, especially for the defensemen here in the second period. Second periods have been good for the Black Bears uh, against Dan Barry. If we go back just a couple of games, you'll see that Binghamton's done a lot of their heavy lifting in the second period. Here, last Saturday night in the 4-1 win, Black Bears score two, Dan Barry does not score any. Same result on Friday night, two goals and none to show. So last weekend, Binghamton outscored Danbury four to nothing in the second period. 
come home for, excuse me, not against Stanbury, but in the second period, Binghamton scores four goals against Motor City on the first game of 2024. So basically what you're saying, Brooks, is that you should not turn off your YouTube feed. You should stick around with us for the second period. Go to New Year's Eve. Binghamton scores one goal. Dan Barry does not score any. So go back to New Year's Eve. Since then, Binghamton is outscoring their opponents nine to nothing since New Year's Eve. So that's our stat of the night. We will take a timeout. Come back with more right back after these messages. For discounted name brand clothing and footwear for the whole family, Homer Men and Boys Store is the place to shop. In business since 1951, our woman-owned family business is known for treating their customers like family. And there's nothing more important to us than backing every sale with friendly service. Come visit us to see the largest pair of jeans in the world. Come see what we have for you. You make me think of good things. Good day. We're going to down. Good day. We're passing them around. So stand up and cheer. Well, that's going to be a good day. Cheer a good natured Canadian Pilsner. Awestruck Premium Hard Cider, crafting transcendent, awe-inspiring liquid made and sealed right in Sydney, New York with New York State apples. Improve your day with Awestruck Premium Hard Cider. CryoWorks provides cryotherapy that uses nitrogen-cooled air to target specific areas of pain and inflammation. Local cryotherapy targets a specific area to deliver the same effects of the whole-body cryotherapy to that specific site. Treatments take 5 to 8 minutes, with a benefit exceeding that of hours of icing. Your Binghamton Black Bears, premier choice of cryotherapy, CryoWorks. Stay in the swing of things with your golf game this winter and check out Fairways Indoor Golf Company. At Fairways, you can play any three state-of-the-art golf simulators. Enjoy your favorite cocktail in the lounge by the fire or watch your favorite sports team on over nine 82-inch TVs. The only slice you'll experience will be from the homemade pizza from the clubhouse kitchen. Bring your own clubs or use theirs. Get the golfer in your life a Fairways gift certificate. Tee off with Fairways Golf Company, 511 Hoover Road, Endwell, online at fairwaysindoor.golf. Are you compassionate and interested in providing care to people with developmental disabilities? Check out a New York State career with Broom OPWDD. Enjoy great benefits such as job security, health insurance, retirement plan, pay time off, opportunities for advancement, and so much more. Positions as direct support professionals in the community or at a secure facility might be exactly the change of pace that you're looking for. For more information, call 607-240-4786 or go online to www.opwdd.ny.gov. We have a huge selection of vehicles and every tool available to fit everyone's credit needs. If you've been told no before, I say no when it feels so good to say yes. Get the vehicle you deserve. Yes, that's awesome. With our guaranteed credit approval program, which can easily be filled out online at jeffkeyes.com. Jeff Kyes Auto Sales, Apple Lincoln, go with the winner, Jeff Kyes. Are you planning on traveling to Binghamton for an upcoming Black Bears game? If so, check out La Quinta Inn and Suites by Wyndham for a night away from home. La Quinta Inn and Suites is a short drive from the arena and is conveniently located off of the Southern Tier Expressway and Highway 17 with easy access to Interstate 81 and the Vestal Parkway. La Quinta Inn and Suites by Wyndham at 581 Harry L. Drive, Johnson City. Reach them at 607-770-9333. Advancements in new clinical therapies are made possible by heroes like you. Velocity Clinical Research is looking for volunteers to participate in clinical research studies. Compensation is provided. There's a Velocity location near you on Old Vestal Road in Vestal. Learn more about participating and becoming a Velocity Medical Hero today. Are you kidding me? How do you do that? 
too. They just got a new hot spring spa. Carlisle has hot spring spa starting at $39.95. Come see how we make every day better by relaxing in a hot spring spa. What happens to you today? You're shredding it. Hot spring spas, baby. Welcome back, everybody, for the final portion of tonight's Excite Intermission. Excite Motorsports Intermission Report, I should say, here. Getting ready to get the highlights queued up here from our video team. And right on cue, here they come. First period started off a little bit slow. Be the first one to admit that here. Only three shots to the first media timeout of the night. But Binghamton scores twice, thanks to Gavin Yates and Nikita Ivashkin. Here, uh, Cole, what were your thoughts on the first period of play? I thought the first 10, 15 minutes were a little choppy. Both teams, even after a weekend playing each other, kind of seeing what the other one's going to bring to the table. But once that Gavin Yates goal that you just saw there unlocked the Black Bears offense, Yates just undresses the Danbury defenders. And then eventually, it would be Nikita Ivashkin who tipped one in two. So... Binghamton opening up at the end of the first. Let's see if they carry that into the start of the second. That's the voice of Cole Parenti. Team's making its way out of the tunnel here. As you see, Ivashkin's goal just barely get underneath the pads of Liam Murray. Getting ready for the second period. Binghamton out shooting, excuse me. Well, yes, they are out shooting their opponent 12 to nine. Last four games for the Black Bears have been outscoring their opponents nine to nothing in the second period. And so Stats with Brooks making its uh, reappearance, say Brooks? No, nope, that's just part of doing your homework and being prepped for the broadcast. Looking at those things, just quick refresher of the memory. Also, when we get to the third period, we're talking about how things have kind of not shaped the way like the second period for the Black Bears as well. So, Black Bears are down Dan Stone for the next 21 seconds. Dan Barry 0 for 2 on their first couple power plays of the night, and they are 21 seconds away from going 0 and 3, unless Johnny Ruiz has anything to say about that. Yeah, Johnny Hockey or Cunningham and Radcliffe with him. They just send their first line out there as their power play number one. You get a good look at Jake Schultz as he gets set for the long change period. So tonight's second period brought to you by our friends over at Greenlight Networks. Drip, you might catch up to that puck, but not in time. Greenlight Networks has fast fiber and reliable internet. You can visit them online at greenlightnetworks.com to find out more about how you could get high-speed internet in your home today. Abel plays it up from the blue line from Ruiz. Dan Stone has returned and right out of the penalty box receives it cleanly with both feet on the ice to avoid uh, taking another penalty. So Stone goes off for a forward. Dan Barry's power play now officially 0 for 3 on the night. Chip pass from Ratcliffe unattainable. Flown out into the neutral zone from Jesse Anderson. And now Yates outside the dots throws on. Some ice up into the night. Thompson over to Anderson. Arister blocked by Abdella into the net and out of play. Well, I think Jesse Anderson has some of the worst luck in the league. He gets shots in good areas, and every time it seems like they get blocked or the goalie comes up with a big save. Jesse should have about 10 goals at least, Brooks, as he only has two, but he gets his opportunities. The defensemen just make great plays on him. It's like they have him targeted. So Kirkby wins that face off back, but Danbury steals it with some excellent wing play from John Scully. Scully's listed as the 10th forward today, but we've seen him take primarily a lot of his shifts as a defenseman. Easy snapshot from McKittrick, snared, and then some tempers flare in the corner. Liam Anderson, and that is Chase Harwell from Southbury, Connecticut. Oh, I believe that's the next town over from Danbury. He is the older brother of the Harwells, Troy, wearing 33. And Chase wearing 15 as you get a look at him on your screen. He took an extra little pot shot here. You'll see it after the whistle at McAnanima. That's always going to draw a response from defenders. And you can see JT Walters really didn't like it. 
Uh, no, I think he's lucky that Liam Anderson was the first man over to him. I was going to say that Liam and Nikita Ivashkin got there because I would not want JT Walters coming at me. That's a big guy. Shot from the point denied by Mack and Animal. Rebound kicked out with a purpose by the Black Bears goaltender, but not cleared as McKittrick does a good job of holding the puck in at the blue line. Anderson takes a bump from Harwell. Looks like those two weren't finished with their conversation yet. Stretch pass. Makes it just wide of the net, and icing is called as Tetro from the opposite side of the ice was the first to the dots. Don't think a lot of people in the arena saw Tetro, 71 in white, going to the far dot where Ivashkin and Abdella were doing a skate race on the near side. Well, even if you were looking at Ivashkin and Abdella, good move by the refs to blow the whistle there. That rule is in play to avoid injury, and you don't want guys going full speed into the end uh, boards just to chase the puck in what could end up being an icing anyway. So. Refs made the right call there, Brooks. Stoichevsky, Anderson, battle. It's Liam Anderson on the wall, gets the first touch of the puck. Stoichevsky took it back, but it's a takeaway for the Black Bears as it's given right back to Connor Smith. He tries to dance around LaBelle at the blue line. LaBelle will have none of that. He throws a wrister blocked by the stick of Walters. He circles around his net, tries to find the open man in Dakota Bond, and it'll be thrown back out into the neutral zone. Danbury with a little bit of pep in their step here. First two minutes of the second period. Maybe they also got the memo of how well the Black Bears have been playing in that middle frame, and they said, hey, we can't have that happen tonight, guys. Yeah, or Coach Billy McCreary gave them a, a nice talking to after going down 2-0 to end that first period. So either one gives them a little kick in the butt as they seem to have a little extra pep in their step, like you said, Brooks. Oliveri crossing over the blue line, trying to dance on through. It gets knocked off his stick behind the Danbury net. Fletcher. Leaves it back for Oliveri. Tries a nifty pass. Logar hammers a one-timer that Murray got a pad to. Bon a riser. Knocked away by a good poke check by Murray. Oliveri tried the lacrosse move. And instead, it flutters off of his stick. Between the defense and all the way back down behind the Black Bears net. Only one Black Bears been able to pull off that move, Brooks. It was Cam Yarwood in the inaugural season against, I believe, the Danbury Hattricks. This is off sides, as Binghamton could not get back in time. Logar on the far side. Couldn't get the skate over to the blue line. And it's a face-off coming up in front of the Black Bears bench. Yeah, just a half inch offside, and it's a game of inches, Brooks. It looks like we'll get the Fletcher, Oliveri, Logar line now with the Adrian College Bulldogs defenseman to back them up. Vaughn. Hammers it around the glass where Abdella was waiting for it on the opposite side. Stolen away by Oliveri, a backhander. Well wide of the far post. Over to McKittrick. Saw the hit coming and got out of the way. And Woolley tries to stretch pass. It works out. Harwell, late developing two on one, but too far ahead of McKittrick. Tries to hit the trailer. Woolley in his skates. Denied by Mack and Anima as Harwell came out of nowhere and got a stick on it. Well, a great defensive play back there by Josh Fletcher to get back on defense, and McEnanima standing tall in his crease. Good play all around. One of the things that Coach Sherwood talked about is 10 hits per period for the Black Bears, and a couple of the hat tricks did not want to be on the receiving end of one of those 10 hits. Yeah, the, definitely Danbury missing a physical presence now without Daniel Amesbury. They will now look to hopefully respond with big guys like Josh LaBelle needs to throw his body weight around. Sinchenko throws this off the wall. He's behind the red line. Weaver to the dots first. This is icing against Danbury with four minutes gone here in period number two. Well, Dan Weaver's return back to the Visions Veteran Memorial Arena. Just came off the 15-day IR last week down in Danbury. He gets his first trip here in front of the home fans. As you see Weaver on your screen, good to have number 61 in black and green back on the ice here in the 607. Kirkby and Swayczewski do battle at the faceoff. Dotty makes its way back over to Schultz. Got a tip from Thompson off the glass, stays in play. Tetro trying to knock it down and settle it. Danbury will get over to a loose puck and Audette from the red line. Make sure he doesn't take another icing back to back. And Binghamton takes over control. Cross ice from Kirkby to Yates. Now over the blue. Tries a nifty little toe drag, but this time unsuccessful. Weaver, though, was back covering in case anything happened. And now Kirkby with Yates, two on three. The captain plays it off the wall for Schultz. He settles. D to D with Weber. Looking through traffic for a tip. Who instead it was knocked down by Thompson. Never made it towards Murray's net. Now Thompson below the goal line. 
Tries a low angle shot, look out as that puck gets deflected off the safety net and into the crowd. Here with 15.02 left to go. Seemed like there was just enough netting to keep that one away from the Binghamton faithful Brooks, the CPR netting as it is. So now Binghamton sets up here on the draw to the left of Liam Murray. It'll be Jesse Anderson taking on Johnny Ruiz. So top line versus the second line for the Black Bears as Anderson wins it back to Walters. Walters now gets the puck down deep. It's Chase Harwell who plays it back down. Binghamton gets a shot off and Murray makes the save as it's melted down. We're gonna go to our under 15 minute media timeout. Stay right here as Binghamton and Danbury in another heated battle. Advancements in new clinical therapies are made possible by heroes like you. Velocity Clinical Research is looking for volunteers to participate in clinical research studies. Compensation is provided. There's a Velocity location near you on Old Vestal Road in Vestal. Learn more about participating and becoming a Velocity Medical Hero today. Whether you're a high school or college athlete or a weekend warrior, Guthrie is the area's premier sports medicine program offering injury evaluation, concussion management, physical therapy, and more. With a full team of providers across New York and Pennsylvania offering same or next day appointments, Guthrie gets you back in the game as quickly as possible. Call the Guthrie Sports Medicine team today at 866-GUTHRIE or learn more at guthrie.org slash sportsmed. Welcome back everybody here, Black Bears YouTube. Thanks for Cole filling in that last minute for me. Was dealing with a technical difficulty, but now we got everything squared away. And the Black Bears, and the offensive zone to the right of Liam Murray, looking to add on some more. Binghamton has two shots this period so far. Danbury has three through the first five minutes. So Smith puts a pass that was almost a little bit too soft over for Liam Anderson, but it's knocked away. This is another icing against Danbury. So we're bringing back into the offensive zone once again. Binghamton with the opportunity to pick their face off, Dodd. No continuity from the Danbury defenders as JT Walters just collided with a ref by accident as that was a nice fun moment. One of those blooper reel ones for sure, but yeah, no continuity here from the Danbury defense. They're letting Binghamton have whatever they want. So Binghamton needs to keep that pressure up, Brooks. His faceoff's won now by the Danbury Hattricks, and Brown will play it up ice. Yeah, Brown, the North Carolina native, just outside of Fayetteville, North Carolina. I wonder if he grew up going to some SPHL games for the uh, Fayetteville Force before they changed their name to the Fire Ants, and then most recently, the Marksmen. How close is that to where you grew up, Brooks? It is about an hour 15 south of Raleigh. So now the residency of oh no, Matthew Boylar just got traded from there. I believe it's Justin yeah. Somero that's Justin there. Justin Somero with the Fable Marksman right now. As a shot through traffic, Mac and Amon didn't get a sight on it. Scully didn't get the tip also. Now Smith crossing over the offensive blue line for the Black Bears. Trying to open up the goaltender out wide, looking for the corner of the net. Goes off the glass and out. Bond gets tied up with McKittrick, and that allows Dan Stone plenty of time and space to corral that loose puck. 2-0 Binghamton leads here, 13-30 left to go in the middle period, brought to you by our friends over at Greenlight Networks. Ray had it hop over his stick, and Murray reverses it around. Danbury player left the puck behind. Stone comes in with a shot looking through the five hole, but Murray closed the door. Stretch pass over to McKittrick, and Bond swipes it away from the hat trick. Dakota Bond is so strong with his stick. He really is a difference maker on the ice. He doesn't net goals, but he is a net positive with the way he takes away goals. Oliveri pressuring Connor Woolley at the offensive blue line. Woolley throws on the brakes and shaves up some ice. I think Audette caught a stick up high. Penalty is coming up. Mackinanema got a piece of it, and he will melt it down. And high sticking is the call. Teeth not having a good night here tonight, Brooks between, especially Danbury's teeth, between Connor Woolley and Jared Yao, both taking one right in the jibs. 
So this is the first penalty of the second period. Danbury is 0 for 3, but it looks like they're going to call somebody over to the penalty box. They haven't made their way over quite yet. Are they... Uh, referees getting together on who the penalty is on. It looks like Dan Weaver may be heading back. to It's Dakota Bond who's going to be taking his first trip to the Sin Bin okay, tonight. Okay, so it is Dakota Bond. Time in the penalty is 7-12. It's a big loss for the Black Bears as his defensive pres presence will certainly be missed. Here it is on your screen. Bond's st stick outside the play just rides up and gets in piece of the Danbury, uh, uh, I should say, offender. So the Black Bears back in the penalty box. Northeastern Stripe Corporation penalty kill for all your paving and contract needs called the Northeastern Striping Corporation. LaBelle crosses over the blue line. Shaves up some ice, gets it over to McKittrick. Down low for Ruiz, start a high cycle. Easily steered aside by Mack and Anima. Now McKittrick back up to the blue line. Where Ratcliffe was waiting for it here, Trey places with LaBelle. LaBelle loads up the cannon, Mack and Anima made the save and on a better one on the rebound off McKittrick. What a save, Connor Mack and Anima take a bow. Back over to Ruiz, post the post, Mack and Anima made another save. That's three, this power play alone. Gets past LaBelle on the clear from Thompson. Only one player, though, going to be able to change for Binghamton. That long second period change might be a factor here. Fresh body is Jesse Anderson. Played all the way across for Troy Harwell. Excuse me, that's Chase Harwell. Down low for Zinchenko. Top of the umbrella, Ratcliffe holding back over to Harwell. Skates in, blocked by Walters. Not out. Ratcliffe playing it back over, Harwell fakes. Down low, and we have a penalty coming up. Cross-checking is the indication from the trail official. Danbury had the puck when the whistle was blown. And their door is open, Brooks, and it looks like it'll be the Danbury forward, Bowden Zinchenko, the 21-year-old from Ukraine. He'll take a seat in the box. I didn't know that they played that much hockey in Ukraine, Brooks, but that's real cool. Definitely. I th he might be the only Ukrainian player in the league. That I don't know about. What I can tell you is that does nullify the Danbury power play as we go to four on four hockey. Two nothing, the Black Bears lead. Danbury is now 0 for four. They had some good opportunity right there on that last power play generated for the first minute 20, but Connor McAnanima makes some great saves. Yeah, Connor McAnanima stood tall, stood his ground. Your goalie has to be your best penalty killer, and certainly in that minute and 20 seconds, Connor McAnanima was. He stood on his head. As you get a look here at the Heinz Energy replay, there's the, cro there's the cross check on Zinchenko. So we are at four on four for the next 28 seconds, and then the Black Bears will have an abbreviated power play. Weber turned it over while well, teams are even on the ice. And Woolley reversing it on the backhand. Schultz waiting for it. Instead, it's picked up by Tetro. Centers it off the goaltender. And picked up by Gavin Yates. Yates starts his engine. He takes a light hit from Tetro, but gets brushed off. And he plays it safely up to the blue line. Bond up and ready, and he has been released. Black Bears are now officially on the power play. And Schultz and Yates not on the same page there. Leads to a takeaway for Danbury to kill off some time with this abbreviated power play. Harwell gets tied up in the corner. It's kicked out by Weber, and now the power play brought to you by Henny Hard Seltzer. Back out onto the ice. Yates flies in. His team's changing. And he settles it down, lets everybody get set up. Bond gets over to his spot, which is the bench for Austin Thompson. Kirkby across, and a glove save made by Murray. I think that rode off the bottom of his glove onto the glass. He was falling down, made the save. Yates a shot, looking for a corner. Instead finds the glass, and sometimes when you get that close and shoot that hard, you don't connect. It's going to wrap all the way around the boards of the glass and come back out. It's Luck a risk-reward factor there, Brooks. Luckily for the Black Bears, they have a quick re-entry into the zone. Yates over to Oliveri. Logar in the bumper spot, a little bit too far ahead of him. As Yates corrals a loose puck on the half wall. 
Spins around LaBelle. Power move to the front. Hack and whack time for the Black Bears. As Kirkby sent down to the ice by Steve Brown, Danbury clears. Yates, I believe, broke his stick. And he's going to pick up a new one. No, check that. They called him for a line change. Kirkby on the backhand, denied by Murray. And he will squeeze tight with the blocker. As Kirkby and LaBelle getting acquainted with each other. A little bit of face washing, but nothing will come of it. 9.22 left to go here. We will step aside, take a media timeout. Back with you right after this. Are you ready to take your billiards game to a whole new level? Dragon Billiards Instruction and Pro Shop has everything you need to impress your friends and crush your opponents. American Q Sports certified coach Kim the Dragon Young is now accepting new students. From novices to pros, the Dragon helps you find your best game with in-person or online instruction available worldwide. Need help with stance, stroke, or alignment and aiming? We've got you covered. Looking for advanced cue control techniques and trick shots? No problem. Follow us on Facebook at Dragon Billiards Instruction and Instagram at Dragon Billiards Kim for free daily tips and drills, upcoming tournaments and events, as well as exciting contests and giveaways. Subscribe on Patreon for personalized video content. Visit our online pro shop for the lowest prices on the highest quality pool cues, accessories, and Dragon Billiards gear. Dragon Billiards Instruction and Pro Shop, breathing fire into your game. You know, I almost feel bad for the kid a little bit. Missed the trivia question. I thought it was a, I thought it was a pretty easy one. It, it looks like D Wade to LeBron slam dunk there, Brooks. I'll ask you, who's number 81 on the Black Bears? It's Josh Fletcher. Gonna see him probably out there on the ice after this power play wraps up. Brooks, why'd you just look at your sheet to double check? I did not. So I that's a good try. <laughs> Actually, the power play is already wrapped up. Excuse me. So Binghamton does not score because that was an abbreviated power play as well. So Binghamton is one for three. Face off one back to the blue line by the Black Bears. And now Ivashkin giving chase against Abdella for control of the loose puck. Backhander is put on target. Macananima is going to have to put his glove on top to trap it and reverse icing against the Black Bears. Yep, Weber was on the way there, but Macananima did not like what he saw from Zinchenko rushing at him. He melts it down and it looks like we will have a face off to Macadamas blocker side. Jesse Anderson wins that face off against Brandon Stoichevsky. Binghamton tried to clear the first time. It was knocked back by Dan Barry and we were having a little bit of pressure in his face. On the second opportunity this puck makes it down. Linesman says you should have played it. And Danbury wanted an icing call. They didn't get it. Now Zinchenko on the bottom side of your screen. Puts a stretch pass over to Stoichevsky. Misplayed it a little bit. He sealed off against the wall. And Audette thrown down by Schultz right after that. Well, that was a big uh, height differential. Jake Schultz looked like he was just kind of keeping his arms level and got him right in the chest. Schultz now picks his head up. Takes a look at what he has, and his pass is going to be blocked by the skates of McKittrick. It's a takeaway for Danbury. Now McKittrick, a re-entry into the zone. Trailers, Woolley, shot, tipped, but just wide. Mack and Animal going post to post, just in case they tried the cheeky wraparound. Scully throws a shot towards the net. It was blocked on the way through, I believe. Friendly fire. And now cleared by the Black Bears here. Under eight minutes left to go here in the middle period. Slap shot. From McKittrick is caught by McAnanima and her hang on. Yeah, he looked like a first baseman there. Brooks got both feet set, just snagged that one right out of the air like it was nothing. McAnanima has been dialed in, uh, very focused tonight. It's going to be tough for Danbury, knock on wood, to beat him here when he's looked this good, stopping all 18 they've thrown at him. Loose puck, McAnanima comes out of his blue paint to play it up to Oliveri. And now that it's stolen away, Danbury comes back late, developing two on one. A shot and another puck snared out of midair by Mack and Anima from Cunningham. An encore there, Brooks. He took another turn at the stage, had the puck right in the same spot. J 
just snagged it with that glove. Here it is on your Heinz Energy replay as Corey Cunningham rushes the zone and Macanamaw snags it out of the air. So Ruiz matched up against Fletcher, 81. Fletcher wins that battle as he gets the puck over to JT Walters. And Fletcher with an aerial pass up to Oliveri, gloves it down legally to himself. One on two, Oliveri with the reverse, it's still with the puck. Oliveri throws it towards the net. Well, boy, that would have been something. And Oliveri then finally tripped up a little bit, makes his way down to the ice. We play on at five on five. Fletcher goes for a line change, and the Kirkby line will come out as everybody from that third line makes its way over to the bench. Don Oliveri just so strong on his skates, able to stay up, stay with the puck, and get a good chance off at Liam Murray. LaBelle reversing it around on the errant pass from Kirkby over to Yates. Yates now does corral it finally. Has some people open at the blue line. This will be Kirkby holding the spot. His shot tipped, Stone denied by Murray. Rebound off of the defender. It was Tetro. Thompson tries to go over the blocker. Off the glass, but held in at the line by Bond. The shot knocked down by Tetro. Once again, I think believe that's now two blocks this shift alone. Bond back over. This time tipped by Yates, never made it towards the net, and kicked back into the blue paint by Kirkby, where Murray settles it down. You think Tyson knows that Nikita just tied him up with goals? He's been hammering him at the net, getting some good, good chances. Nothing to show yet on the score sheet. But like I said, Brooks, I expect Tyson Kirkby to score tonight and extend his goal streak to six straight games. So Kirkby still out there on the ice. As Cole mentioned, Kirkby riding a five-game goal streak and an eight-game point streak as well. Abdella, marked by Thompson, plays it out of the zone for Woolley. Given a rough ride by Dan Stone, but he lost the puck at the red line and flicked right back in by the Black Bears captain. And now Abdella behind his own net. Likes his chances to get past Thompson and gets over to the red line, dumps it in. Vaughn failed on the clear to the far side where Yates was waiting for it. Danbury doing battle with Binghamton on the bottom side of your screen. Actually, a good camera angle from the corner. I didn't know we switched. And you see Dakota Bond come away with it. His pass a little bit too soft for Austin Thompson. Ratcliffe knocked into the wall by Stone. Now Bond has a second opportunity this time. Much more controlled and shorter pass to Gavin Yates as Yates flies into the zone. Right wing side. Gets around Scully. Still with the puck on his stick. Gets around LaBelle. Over to Ivashkin, stuff chance. Murray did a good job holding the post. Broken stick on the ice, it was Ivashkin. Equipment manager Dylan Konechny leaning over the wall to get Ivashkin a new twig. I think he gets an assist on that if Ivashkin comes down and scores with that new stick, bro. I sure hope he would. Dylan is also going to be our next guest at Tully's Good Times with Coach Show this upcoming Tuesday. So here from an equipment manager as Ivashkin almost made the wish come true as it was poked wide. So yep, equipment manager Dylan Konechny gonna be the guest at Tully's on Tuesday at Tully's at the Vestal Parkway. Get a little bit of behind the scenes. What goes on in the locker room from a non-player perspective? Well, Brooks, he works real hard between getting jerseys prepared, sharpening skates, getting twigs. So good to see Dylan Konechny uh, getting the recognition he deserves because he's one of the main factors that keeps this team running. It may not be shown on the ice, but behind the scenes, he really works hard. This is icing against the hat tricks. And if that wasn't enough, let me implore you, come on out to Tully's next Tuesday, the 23rd at 6 p.m. on the Vestal Parkway. Myself, Coach Sherwin, and Dylan will be there along with some of the players as well. We're headed to a timeout. Black Bears still lead two to nothing here with about four minutes left to go. Jersey, bring us the hitties. Yeah. Baby. <laughs> Win like that calls for a real celebration. Oh yeah. I have one on the
Getting your hands on an all-new CF Moto side-by-side or four-wheeler is now easier than ever at ExciteMotorsports.com. Purchase your next power sports vehicle with our new, easy, and quick online buying experience. Browse inventory on ExciteMotorsports.com. Buy. Get approved for financing and e-sign online right from your phone. Ride. Have your new power sports vehicle delivered to your home the next day at no extra charge. Browse. Buy. Ride. Fun starts here at ExciteMotorsports.com. Welcome back, everybody, here. Brooks Hill, Cole Parenti, and Super Producer Peter, along with Josh and the entire video crew. Doing our best, as always, here to bring you Black Bears hockey. Anderson wins his faceoff back to Ivoshkin with a little turnaround shot. That was probably a little bit of a heat check. Right there, easily seen by Murray. Ivoshkin with one goal already tonight. Six different Black players. Uh, black Bears players have a point tonight in the contest. Five forwards and Jake Schultz, the lone defenseman. That's what we call sharing the wealth, Brooks. It'll make your coach happy to see everyone getting on the score sheet. Swojcevski wins this face off. Danbury tries to clear. It does get past Ivoshkin right at the offensive blue line, and now they come back the other way. Zinchenko with the puck that ends up going in over in. An easy save for Mack and Anima. Stretch pass off the wall. Ivoshkin will beat the icing call. And it ends up behind the net for Danbury. Ivoshkin tries to center up, takes a shove, but stays on his feet. Now Jesse Anderson takes a shove from Abdella. As people are getting familiar with each other behind the goal line of Liam Murray's net. Ten hits a period, Brooks. Ivoshkin trying to get it on the backhand. Saw a nifty backhander last night from Philadelphia Flyers forward Owen Tippett with a beautiful spin on Rama. I think Ivoshkin was going for something a little bit closer to that. Right there on that play, Abdella and Anderson get reacquainted. And now Smith drawing a crowd. A lot of players down low for Danbury right now. Low to high would work very well for the Black Bears, in my honest opinion. As I say that, that puck makes its way out into the neutral zone. Three minutes left to go here in the second period. Smith touches up, quick re-entry. He's with Fletcher and Ray. Ray throws on the brakes, back up to the line for Bond. Shot denied, rebound from Fletcher is kicked out by Murray. Ray, like a speeding bullet, comes into the rebound. Abdella shaken up from that Oliveri slap shot. A little bit of hodgepodge right now going on between the lines. And a beautiful back check by Ray and Oliveri to get the puck right back. Ray comes in and snared by Murray. Last time Dan Barry was in the building, he did that shot against Connor McCollum, and it worked. So Thomas Ray not afraid to shoot for the corners. It looks like Xavier Abdella is still in a little pain from that Don Oliveri shot. It was a heavy one. Look at the back check here from Don and Ray. Ray with a nifty. That speed is so killer, Brooks, but another snag from Leah Murray, who's looked very, very solid in this second period, not really giving Binghamton anything to shoot at. Tetro wins this face-off back from Johnny Ruiz, and it was held in momentarily by Bond at the line, but Tetro comes flying in. He tries to go between his legs, but no getting around uh, the stone wall that is Dan Stone. And Ray with a nifty little pass, or excuse me, a deke on Ruiz made the crowd go ooh and ah a little bit. Not going to outwork Thomas Ray. I don't think teams have figured that out by now. As Ray will go off on a line change, his shift is over. Cunningham touches up at the blue line. This is not icing. Mack and Animos steers it. On the back end where the captain... Tyson Kirkby picks it up. They cross over the line, gets it down low for Thompson. That allows the Black Bears defenders to change. Weaver and Schultz now on the ice, and Thompson blew a tire. And Weaver does a good job of holding that puck in. Yates creating some separation, has some open ice. He dances around. He's getting passed off, looking for Thompson on the doorstep. It went off a defender skate. And now Danbury into the neutral zone, gets the puck. Back into the Binghamton end. Schultz elects not to go for the stretch pass. That time it gets knocked down from Fletcher. Excuse me, Weber, 61, not 81. This is offsides against Binghamton. Yates hasn't gotten the memo yet. And a whistle with 67 seconds left to go here well, in the middle period. Thought that offside might have helped Binghamton as Weber had jumped the rush a little too far. He's the stay-at-home defenseman on that line, so to see him jump the rush, get a little more offense, is something that's exciting, but also you got to be careful. But nothing Jake Schultz can't handle.
Face off to the left of Mac and Animal. 67 seconds left to go here. Third period, excuse me, second period action. There's Frank letting us know that there's 60 seconds left to go. As now Weaver plays it off the wall for Thompson. Thompson, backhand over to Yates. Yates with some room to operate. Backhander denied by Murray, down on one leg. Up to the blue line, Schultz fires, slap shot, knocked down by Thompson. Rebound from Kirkby is absorbed by Murray. Well, it looks like Dan Barry got your memo, Brooks, that Binghamton has been strong in the second period. Nothing to show for it for either side as the top line for Dan Barry comes out to take the final shift. But we'll see if that can change in the final 40 seconds. Ideal Bowling Center is where Binghamton hockey fans bowl with open bowling all week long with money-saving specials. Ideal is a great place for family, friends, company, parties, and special occasions. Ideal Bowling, Ideal bowling Center, 119 Jennings Street in Endicott. So much more than just your favorite bowling alley. Getting ready to debut a new sponsor next period. We're very, very excited to talk about it. We have to sit through the Excite Motorsports intermission report before we get to it. But I think it, a lot of people are going to be excited not only that this sponsor is part of the Black Bears family now, but also coming to the Southern Tier area. That's all I'm going to give you for right now. But stay tuned for more in the third period. Final push for the Black Bears. Ten seconds left to go. Ivashkin plays it around the wall for Smith. Black Bears need to hustle if they want one more shot. Liam Anderson throws it towards the net. Tip just wide. The horn will sound. And that is the end of the second period. Nobody scores in the middle frame. I'm a little surprised to say so myself. But the Black Bears still carry a 2-0 advantage over the Danbury Hattricks into the locker room, Cole. Yeah, Brooks, it was more of a shutdown period from both sides, both goalies making some good, good saves. Connor McAnanima making some stellar saves. And it looks like his team is content to just keep the same pace. We gotta see if Danbury comes back with a response. We know that they've been a third period team. They've come back before against Binghamton, so you gotta weather the storm. And we'll see what the message is for Coach Sherwood and Coach McCreary as we head to the third. All right, that's the voice of Cole Parenti. We will take a timeout. Come back with the second period edition of Excite Motorsports. So don't go anywhere, folks. More coming up right after this. Advancements in new clinical therapies are made possible by heroes like you. Velocity Clinical Research is looking for volunteers to participate in clinical research studies. Compensation is provided. There's a Velocity location near you on Upper Front Street in Binghamton. Learn more about participating and becoming a Velocity Medical Hero today. Toyota Trucks, let's go places. Welcome back in for another edition of the Excite Motorsports Intermission Report. Look at that. 408 Front Street in Vestal, New York. Zip code 13850. And the phone number is 607-341-7588. www.excitemotorsports.com. See, I didn't even have to look at my sheet. I can just look at the sign the entire time that Trevor's driving around that brand new CF Moto that you could have the chance to win is he's dip diving duck or no dip dive dip dodge duck dive and dodge the five D's of dodgeball yeah the from only, Patches O'Houlihan right there the only thing it looks like Trevor's not doing is buttoning his shirts all the way up as he's letting uh as, uh, I, as they used to say about Luke Voigt, that chest me kind of fly there. If we can get another view of it. But let's not say we did. Yeah, all the same, let's get back to some hockey. Yeah, let's talk about the Columbia Mutual Life insurance stat sheet. Columbia Mutual Life have been protecting the families in the Southern Tier for over 140 years. We thank them for their generous support of Black Bears hockey once again. So stats in the period. 
Binghamton, 17 shots on goal for a game total of 29. Danbury with a period total of 12 for a game total of 21. So, 29-21 shots on goal favoring Binghamton. Things on the big board where it matters the most, two for Binghamton, zero for Danbury, but nobody scores in that second period. Uh, both teams do not convert on their power plays. Binghamton had an abbreviated power play. Danbury had their power play cut short at four on four. Danbury is 0 for four. Binghamton is one for three on the night. Those are the stats brought to you by our friends over at Columbia Mutual Life Insurance Company. Columbia Mutual Life been protecting families in the Southern Tier for over 140 years. We're going to take a timeout. Cole will update everybody on the out-of-town scoreboard when we come back here on the Excite Motorsports Intermission Report. Looks like we got a lucky winner, 3-3-3, three, 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 like a jackpot. Three lucky numbers in a row. Congratulations to whoever won. They are entered to win that brand new CF Moto at the end of the season. Don't go anywhere, folks. More coming up right after this. Whether you're a high school or college athlete or a weekend warrior, Guthrie is the area's premier sports medicine program, offering injury evaluation, concussion management, physical therapy, and more. With a full team of providers across New York and Pennsylvania offering same or next day appointments, Guthrie gets you back in the game as quickly as possible. Call the Guthrie Sports Medicine team today at 866-GUTHRIE or learn more at guthrie.org slash sportsmed. Are you looking for a new place to live? Lofts at JC is the official housing partner of the Binghamton Black Bears and the only luxury housing provider offering both two and three bedroom units fully furnished for a modern living lifestyle. Lofts at JC is century located in the heart of the Tri-Cities area located at 128 Grand Avenue in Johnson City. Housing applications are accepted online at loftsatjc.com. Once again, that's loftsatjc.com. Toyota Trucks, let's go places. Jersey, bring us the Hennies! Yeah! All right, I got the Hennies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Cheers, baby. A win like that calls for a real celebration. Oh, yeah. I have one on the Magic 1017. Best radio station. Keeps getting better. Better music selection. <laughs> best ever. <laughs> Makes me feel better. Number one for music and fun. It's like the best ever. Magic 1017. 100% local. Getting your hands on an all-new CF Moto side-by-side -side or four-wheeler is now easier than ever at ExciteMotorsports.com. Purchase your next power sports vehicle with our new, easy, and quick online buying experience. Browse inventory on ExciteMotorsports.com. Buy. Get approved for financing and e-sign online right from your phone. Ride. Have your new power sports vehicle delivered to your home the next day at no extra charge. Browse. Buy. Ride. Fun starts here at ExciteMotorsports.com. Com. Experience the new way to watch your Black Bears play all season long at home and on the road free on YouTube. You can experience gig speeds with Greenlight Networks. 
Our reliable fiber connection provides fast, affordable internet, so you can accomplish more in less time. We're expanding coverage in many places in the southern tier, and we want to be your internet provider. Visit greenlightnetworks.com and click on Check Availability to see if we're in your area. Greenlight Networks, fast, affordable internet in your hometown. Welcome back, everybody, for another edition of the Excite Motorsports Intermission Report. Brand new sponsor alert coming in just a couple of minutes. We're very excited to reveal that here when we get started with the third period. But before we get to that, we got to talk about the out-of-town scoreboard and what's going on across the FPHL. I believe there are five games going on tonight, including this one. One team is idle, and off first glance, let's see if I can guess. I know what it, it is, is, Brooks. Okay, it is the Baton Rouge Zydeco. Oh, that was my thing. I was going to say that. But, yep, Brooks, you are correct. But now let's take a look around. Still 2 nothing here in the Visions Veteran Memorial Arena. But if you head a mile west, or I should say an hour west, Elmira now leads Watertown 4-2 to two, as that game also looks to be heading to the third. At the end of one, the Columbus River Dragons lead the Withville Blue Ridge Bobcats down in the Virginia Mountains, and Carolina and Mississippi had a high scoring first period that saw Carolina walk away taking a 4-3 lead in Winston-Salem. The Battle of Detroit, or I should say the Battle of Michigan still going on. Port Huron after one period leads 1-0 over the Motor City Rockers. That game was significant for the two teams here as Motor City above Danbury, but below Binghamton. Well, thank you, Cole, for that update on the out-of-town scoreboard. Baton Rouge, as we figured out, is the team idle tonight and not playing. It'll be the same two teams here tonight, Watertown and Elmira will flip location, and they will play up in the North Country tomorrow night. Yeah, everybody else, I believe, is staying put because it's also Silver Stick Weekend up in Michigan. So I actually believe that Port Huron Motor City will flip as well. So I believe Carolina, Mississippi stay in put, and Columbus and Blue Ridge also stay in put as well. So... Two flip-flops across the league here this weekend, but Black Bears will be right here tomorrow night at 7 p.m. for Mascot Mania. Got Bingo and a bunch of his friends. Going to be around the concourse. It's a great night to bring out the whole family. Not that any night isn't a great night to bring out the whole family, but this one in particular as they get ready for some great fun. A lot of opportunities for photos before the game, during the game. Maybe after, I don't know. But a great opportunity to get your pictures with a lot of mascots, not only from other local sports teams, but also local businesses who you might not know have mascots. You never know who's going to show up at a Black Bears game. You have to be prepared for the moment. Tyson Kirkby leaves Austin Matthews a ticket every single game. Hasn't claimed it yet, but one day he might. We're going to take a timeout, come back with the highlights brought to you by our friends over at the Binghamton Hockey Booster Club. We're back in a few minutes right after these messages. Are you ready to take your billiards game to a whole new level? Dragon Billiards Instruction and Pro Shop has everything you need to impress your friends and crush your opponents. American Q Sports certified coach Kim the Dragon Young is now accepting new students. From novices to pros, the Dragon helps you find your best game with in-person or online instruction available worldwide. Need help with stance, stroke, or alignment and aiming? We've got you covered. Looking for advanced cue control techniques and trick shots? No problem. Follow us on Facebook at Dragon Billiards Instruction and Instagram at Dragon Billiards Kim for free daily tips and drills, upcoming tournaments and events, as well as exciting contests and giveaways. Subscribe on Patreon for personalized video content. Visit our online pro shop for the lowest prices on the highest quality pool cues, accessories, and Dragon Billiards gear. Dragon Billiards Instruction and Pro Shop, breathing fire into your game. When you 
care about something, you take care to protect it. The family that depends on you and the future you're planning for them. You'll have your own college stories too someday. With sound advice, smart strategies, and a broad variety of life insurance options, Security Mutual can help provide for the people you care about and also help you reach your financial goals. It's a sound plan. The time to start thinking about college and retirement is now. Security Mutual Life, the company that cares. Get access to exclusive player events, monthly parties, and road trips to away Black Bears games. This is what you get when you become a member of the Binghamton Black Bears Booster Club. Stop by the Booster Club table behind Section 4 at the next Black Bears home game, pick up a 50-50 ticket, and sign up to join for just $10. Stay up to date on the Booster Club by liking their Facebook page, facebook.com slash Binghamton Black Bears Booster Club. Monthly meetings with players, road trips, and a whole lot of fun when you join the Black Bears Booster Club. Advancements in new clinical therapies are made possible by heroes like you. Velocity Clinical Research is looking for volunteers to participate in clinical research studies. Compensation is provided. There's a Velocity location near you on Upper Front Street in Binghamton. Learn more about participating and becoming a Velocity Medical Hero today. Wanting more Black Bears hockey? Season tickets are on sale. Visit BinghamtonBlackBears.com or call the front office at 607-722-7367 to learn more. You can experience gig speeds with Greenlight Networks. Our reliable fiber connection provides fast, affordable internet, so you can accomplish more in less time. We're expanding coverage in many places in the southern tier, and we want to be your internet provider. Visit GreenlightNetworks.com and click on Check Availability to see if we're in your area. Greenlight Networks. Fast, affordable internet in your hometown. Welcome back, everybody, for the tail end of the Excite Motorsports Intermission Report. Getting those highlights queued up for everybody here from the second period. No goals in the second period. Very rare we find ourselves in a period this year that nobody was able to score. And as the highlights start running through here, probably going to see a lot of saves here. Connor McAnanima and Liam Murray both standing on their head, killing off some penalties, making some clutch saves keeping this game well within reach for the Danbury hat tricks. I was speaking with some of our friends in the media, uh, Ian Mills of Fox 40 and Bob Howard of the Power Play Post Show, about how they were kind of surprised that no goals were scored in the period as well. And apparently it's Ian's bedtime. So he asked for some early goals here in the third period so he could go ahead and go back to the station and get the highlights ready to roll at 10 o'clock. So all in good fun, of course. Black Bears and hat tricks in a close one, as really always. Really haven't been true blownouts. You can say a three goal lead is a blowout or a three goal result, but a lot of the games have been close all year long. So seeing a couple bodies fly back and forth. Think Josh and his team are gonna have a little bit of a hard time. Figuring out what is going to be the Gork construction collision of the game tonight. But we get you ready for the third period. But before we get there, uh, Cole, thoughts going into the final 20 here uh, for both sides. Well, for Danbury, it's, you know, bring back that Danbury Ice Arena kind of magic that they've had. Come back against the Black Bears again. For Binghamton, it's don't take that foot off the gas pedal. Don't take this team for granted. And make sure you get pucks in deep and even add another one to really sure up this lead. Thank you, Cole. As you can see at the top of your screen, less than a minute left to go before we start the third period. And I'm looking at my friend Peter 
over on the supercomputer, and I think he's ready. So let's go ahead and unveil our new sponsor for tonight and the rest of the season. Third period, yes, it is BJ's Wholesale Club, proud sponsors of the Black Bears third period. And now here is their first official ad read. The third period is brought to you by BJ's Wholesale Club. Now open in Johnson City, where members can save 25% off grocery store prices every day. Still take advantage of their brand new membership deal. I remember when we got a BJ's back in Raleigh, my parents became members instantly while I was in middle school, and we would always stop at BJ's for gas, cheap gas as well. I love wholesale clubs and I really love that BJ's Wholesale Club, now in Johnson City, is a part of the Black Bears family. Gotta go over and get my club card. You can still sign up over at the Oakdale Mall, which is where, or the Oakdale Commons, I should say, rather, which is where this BJ's location is gonna be. So you got a lot of Black Bears sponsors over there. You got the Dick's House of Sport, you got Beer Tree, and you also have BJ's Wholesale Club. So, a lot of exciting. Brooks, if we're sending you guys BJ's from down in Long Island, because I know we have a few down there, you guys got to trade us back a Wegmans, because we don't have any of those on Long Island, and they're sick. Face off one back by the Black Bears. Yates dancing around, drops back to Bond, it's tip wide by Austin Thompson while he was in the blue paint. Stone starting the reverse cycle over to Gavin. Yates a little bit too far in front of the Black Bears forward. Attempt to clear is failed. Yates takes a heavy hit from Johnny Ruiz. And Vaughn throws one on target that Murray had to be ready for. Ruiz with a textbook hit on Yates. And now he goes off on a line change while his teammates dump the puck in. I think Yates got caught a little bit with his head down. On, didn't see that one coming, but now he has his head up coming back. Centers it up for Thompson. Just behind 25 in black. Quick reload for the Black Bears. Schultz to the middle of the ice. Tipped on by Kirkby. Thompson gives chase. He's the first man to it. Collides with the goaltender inadvertently. Referee says just to play on. And a two-on-two -two break out the other way for Danbury. But Kittrick out wide. Throws it towards the net. Hoping for a prayer. And it's kicked up into the safety net and out of play. Yeah, Jake Schultz got his stick on that. It's a real long stick down there, Brooks. He has got the long, I believe the longest stick on the team. So to be able to make that poke check, it's something that's kind of nice about having Jake Schultz back is that he has a nice wide range of where passes can go. Harwell wins that face off back. Scully did a good job of keeping that puck in. Gets around two Black Bears. That's Chase Harwell with the puck. They play it back up for Brown. Shot tip. And rebound still available. I believe Schultz actually knocked that one down. Looked like players were looking for the loose puck, like it was lost in someone's equipment. But falls down to the ice, stays in play, and thrown back into the neutral third. Now a Weber, Chase Harwell, one-on-one -on -one down low. Weber wins this battle. He now dances around McKittrick. Danbury's in the process of changing while that puck was so far behind the Binghamton net. As the Black Bears can't control it in the neutral zone for the time being, teams passing it back and forth like neither one of them kind of wanted it. And Zinchenko deflects one on target that Mac and Anima had to be ready for. Look out, in the skates of Smith, Zinchenko centers up a shot wide from Audette. And penalty coming up against the Black Bears. Jake Schultz is going to be headed to the penalty box. Took a penalty with his back turn. It was inadvertent, but the referees aren't going to matter with that one. Schultz guilty of the infraction. And another Northeastern Striping Corporation penalty kill here to start the period, Cole. Yep, this Northeastern Striping Corporation penalty kill really getting their money's worth. They've been perfect so far. We'll see if they can keep it up. But 
Jake Schultz, guilty again. This is his second trip to the sin bin. Uh, he's not happy. But whoever is happy when they head to the sin bin? I don't think anybody. Face off one back by Kirkby. Walters tries to clear it off the glass. It gets past Ratcliffe, but not deep. And Barry touches up, and it's a quick reload for the hat tricks. Cunningham outside the dot centers up for Ruiz in between the hashes. Knocked back away from Harm temporarily. Ratcliffe back over to Ruiz. Fires a slap shot and scores on the power play. Anderson and Walters down low both immediately go to the officials. I believe that went off the connector bar. And right back out. It's a power play goal for Danbury. And the hat tricks tighten the gap a little bit. It looks like we're going to review this play, Brooks. I bet you Binghamton, the only thing they could really argue about is, I would think, goaltender interference because that puck was not tipped along the way. Johnny Ruiz just gets a hammer of a shot. There's no goaltender interference there unless they're talking about a tip. I don't see how this is going to come back unless Liam Anderson and JT Walters are seeing something I'm not. So this is slow-mo. Also worth noting that there are cameras positioned above both nets. That will clearly tell the puck, see if the puck has gone in or not. We do not have that because it's on a different stream. It's on a streaming uh, platform, not platform, software. That's what I was, the word I was looking for. All right, and the goal counts. It looks good it from should. here, Brooks. Yep, a lot of people will boo and jeer, but I think that is absolutely the right call. Yeah, I thought I saw the net ripple when I was watching it live. I don't know what, I guess Anderson and Walters must have thought it hit off the crossbar. It did make that ping noise, but just a nice corner picked by Johnny Ruiz. There's a reason he wears that C on his chest and the reason he's been so dominant in this league for so long. So it's Johnny Ruiz picking up the power play goal that gets Danbury on the board. The shutout bid is over. Uh, the crowd is going to moan about this one, but I believe they are incorrect. So numbers three and five, Radcliffe and LaBelle get the assist on Ruiz's 18th of the year. It's a power play goal, and this is a one goal contest now with 16.45 left to go. Binghamton looking to hopefully change the script of what's been going on against this team with the rabbits on their chest. So we'll see how this works. Logar coming in through the hashes, knocked out and poked wide by Oliveri on the rebound. Murray made the initial save and the second one didn't make it on net. So 16-20 left to go. Now Ruiz comes flying in, tries to outweight, but lost the puck behind the net on his wraparound attempt. Stone now over to Logar. And Logar sensing pressure at the offensive blue line, or defensive blue line, pulls it back wisely. Oliveri with a tight turn from his own net, throws it on target that Murray has to play it. That allows Binghamton to change freely. Stretch pass for Cunningham from the goal mouth. Goes off the wall, back over to the Black Bears. Scully now from the red line. Offsides is Danbury, is Chase Harwell. I think that puck was one pass too far behind. I believe Harwell thought he was already going up to the blue line, not backwards first. And he was offsides by almost a first down. Yeah, Harwell wanted that puck on his stick. You could hear him slam his stick as if he expected to get it back. And then I think he must have lost eyesight with it, jumped the play just a bit early and couldn't recover when his feet came out from under him. So Kirkby Harwell. Battle against the wall in front of the penalty box. And I believe that's Harwell. Knocked down to the ice. Player gets back up. It's Gavin Yates now with the puck. Yates started the scoring way back in the first period. He tries to shelf it off the goaltender. Going now Murray has lost his stick in the process. And now it's in the skates of Austin Thompson. Danbury's got to be careful when the goalie goes to go get that puck. And there he goes. So goalie out of his net temporarily. Walters. Couldn't get a slap on it, and McEnamal had to make another save on a whack from Harwell. So Liam Murray has his stick back. Yates goes between the legs of LaBelle, dances in. Circles around, looking for Schultz. He calms down at the blue line, looking for a slap pass from Anderson. 
Makes his way over to the wall. He throws Audette to the plexiglass, and it's denied. Zinchenko's off sides, and now Swiecheski is as well. So both teams going to take this opportunity to change some of their players. Under 15 minutes left to go here. 2-1 to one Black Bears lead. Johnny Ruiz on the power play, the latest goal scorer on the fifth man up opportunity of the night for the hat tricks. Tetro spins off a hit from Anderson, but then collides with his own man and allows the Black Bears to slap the puck right back in. A lot of chip and chase from both these teams. Neither one really wanting to make a mistake and give up that crucial next goal. Weaver throws it into the open corner, stretch pass, and Tanko was calling for it, but it was denied by the Black Bears in front of the Danbury bench. Smith holding. Nifty little stick handling from the Cowboy now. He goes out wide. He's got Fletcher crashing the net in the goal mouth, and Ivoshkin scores his second of the night. While Nikita now takes the lead from Tyson Kirkby. What a follow-up play by him. He kept following the puck to the net after it was thrown there by Connor Smith. Gives him a nice little head tap as you see it on your screen and Nikita finishes his second of the game to restore Binghamton's two goal lead. Here it is, Connor Smith gets this started, throws at the net, hits off the skate of Samuel Tetro and Nikita, right place, right time, has his second and 18th of the season. I don't think that pass was intended for Ivashkin. I think it was going to Fletcher, but it works out again. This play is off sides as Oliveri was ahead. Connected with Brown on a hit as Ray scooted the puck in, so a neutral zone faceoff coming up. It's Connor Smith's hustle that really gets this play done, Brooks. But we'll talk about it after we come back. Fans, the Black Bears are back tomorrow night at home to take on Danbury once again, but this time it's Mascot Mania. Join Bingo and all of his friends around the concourse pregame and get your picture taken. Puck drop is at 7 o'clock, and we hope to see out. You can grab your tickets online at BinghamtonBlackBears.com. Advancements in new clinical therapies are made possible by heroes like you. Velocity Clinical Research is looking for volunteers to participate in clinical research studies. Compensation is provided. There's a Velocity location near you on Upper Front Street in Binghamton. Learn more about participating and becoming a Velocity Medical Hero today. All about you make me think of good things. Good things. We're coming to us down. Good Good-natured Canadian Pilsner. Crowd getting energized here in the third period as we get set for more action. Danbury down by one, excuse me, down by two now as Nikita Ivashkin scores his now team high, 18th of the season giving the Black Bears a two-goal cushion for the time being. 13.30 left to go. Let's see what shakes out. Third line against top line. Third line out for Coach Sherwood's club. Top line out for Coach McCurry's club. Looks like Ruiz is at the end of his shift. That pass was tipped by Oliveri, and it deflects on target, nullifying any chance of icing. Nice reverse hit from Oliveri on his backside. Harwell trying to get a loose puck over to his teammate, but Fletcher with a beautiful back check job takes a crunch from LaBelle. Ray, stick handling, sidestepping hits, still with the puck. Gets it over to Oliveri. Bond settles it down. Back over to 13. A wrister that didn't get off the ground held in by the post. Beautiful keep by Dan Stone. Keep this play alive for the Black Bears. Down low for Fletcher. Stone D to D. Bond shot, steered into the net by Murray. Great shift right there from the third line. Yeah, they had pressure going after the Nikita goal to keep it up, keep the pressure on Danbury, get them to crack and get this lead up to a four, get the burger goal, and send these fans home even happier than they would be if it's just a win. But I'm getting too far ahead of myself here, Brooks. 12.36 left to go. Kirkby loses this face off in the offensive zone, but Thompson 
Corrals the loose puck, gets it back over to his captain. Little two-man game with their skates in tight quarters. Yates coming off a wrap check, holds, trying to drag it around Scully. And Scully gets bailed out by his skate. Hattricks come back the other way. A kid trick from the goal line. Sealed off by Liam Anderson. Always paired up with JT Walters. And now Yates tries to sidestep Scully. That time Scully wins the battle, not with a good hit, but knocking the puck away from Gavin Yates cleanly. JT started the season matched up with Jesse Anderson, so I guess Sherwood, Coach Sherwood must have thought, well, if one Anderson worked, I guess the second one will too, as now he's paired up with LA. Binghamton up to 35 shots on goal. They came into the period with 29. Danbury up to 24. They came in with 21. So a slight edge in shots in the period so far favoring the home team. Each side has scored a goal. Binghamton at even strength. Danbury on the power play. Brown slaps it down low. I believe he thought a forward was down there in that spot. Backhander denied by McEnanema. He reaches out for the loose puck, and he gets it under the trapper with 11-16 left to go in the third period. McEnanema seemed to settle in since Johnny Ruiz was able to beat him in the top left corner with that snipe of a shot. So he has looked real strong in these last six, seven minutes. He's got to ride this strong streak all the way to the end, Brooks. He's got a little bit of time left, but I'm sure that Tyson, being the wonderful captain that he is, would throw his goal streak and point streak away for a regulation win. So now Weber on the second breakout of this shift for the Black Bears. Anderson crosses over the line. Weber throws it wide. That was a little bit of a deceptive shot that the goalie didn't have to react to. Funny bounce for Ivashkin now looking for the hat trick and sending people home happy with a coupon. Smith, a wrister, wide of the blocker. Schultz had it hop over his stick, and now Cunningham takes advantage of the Black Bears' misfortune. Go two on two the other way. Cunningham. Had his shot partially blocked by Smith. It's an easy save for the Black Bears goaltender who just needs one more to send some lucky fans home with an Alexander's Cafe sandwich. Now, Brooks, I think he has it as it registers 26 shots on goal here for Danbury. 25 saves, that would mean for yep. Connor McAnanema. Thank you, Cole, good eye. So that, that row is going home with some free breakfast sandwiches. Lucky. Courtesy of our friends over at Alexander's Cafe. Woolley fires, slap shot blocked, given right back. Ivashkin and Schultz trying to clear this puck. They do the smart thing, go backwards, away from the net. And now Smith, skate to stick, plays it out into the neutral zone, and another dump in by Danbury. Blue line, Tetro. Over to Harwell, Scully fake the slap shot, got Ivashkin to bite, got a tip from Woolley. Made its way into the corner. Tetro through traffic, and it's tipped in by McKittrick in between the hashes. So Dan Barry, excuse me, it's Connor Woolley. Connor Woolley with the tip in goal, and now it's a 3 to 2 game with 10 minutes left to go here in the third period. Well, it's like both teams just took the defensive style hockey from the first two periods and threw it out the window as they both are going way more into their offensive minded structures here. Two goals for Dan Barry, one for the Black Bears. And this is crucial, Brooks. This next 10 minutes is huge. The next goal is the most important one of this game. It'll either be a two-goal lead for Binghamton or will be tied. And we'll have to see how each team responds to this new Danbury goal. 14th point of the year for Connor Woolley. It's his eighth goal. And now Binghamton tries to come back the other way, but Oliveri left the puck behind. Tetro and Scully get the assist. Third line back out there for Coach Sherwood after that goal. And I like that call from Coach Sherwood sending the third line guys back out there. They got a couple minutes worth of rest, and they had a great offensive shift last time they were out there. Yeah, that offensive shift was generating some momentum, it seemed, but it looked like it all might have gone out the window after that tip from Connor Woolley. However, still 10 minutes to play. Anything can happen. Thomas Ray lands a hit on Colby Audette, the new re-signee. For the club, Oliveri stretches it over to Ray, who's on sides. Comes in with a slap shot that's blockered away by Murray. Oliveri, Bond collide with each other. 
And now Danbury trying to come back the other way. Oliveri makes his way back up to his skates. And now Danbury's in the process of a line change. Ray sensing pressure through the middle of the ice, elects to peel back. And will go off for a line change. Liam Anderson gets over the red line and throws it same side dumping where Tetro was waiting for it. Yates could not seal the wall. This is not going to make the line for icing. 8.30 left to go. Turnover. Johnny Ruiz takes away the loose puck. Snared by McEnanema and sends us to a media timeout. 8.24 left to go. It's a one-goal game once again. 3-2. Black Bears lead. Back with you right after this. You can experience gig speeds with Greenlight Networks. Our reliable fiber connection provides fast, affordable internet, so you can accomplish more in less time. We're expanding coverage in many places in the southern tier, and we want to be your internet provider. Visit greenlightnetworks.com and click on Check Availability to see if we're in your area. Greenlight Networks, fast, affordable internet in your hometown. For discounted name brand clothing and footwear for the whole family, Homer Men and Boys Store is the place to shop. In business since 1951, a woman-owned family business is known for treating their customers like family. And there's nothing more important to us than backing every sale with friendly service. Come visit us to see the largest pair of jeans in the world. Come see what we have for you. While we were away, they had a graphic up on the video board for Connor McEnanema, who was named the Booster Club Player of the Month for December. Was uh, that goalie Connor McEnanema or forward Connor McEnanema? Well, got they, that. they set a career high in assists, and he got one as a goalie and one as a forward in the month of December. He also got a shutout, and now he is the league leader and goals against average at 218. So congratulations to Connor. They did that while we were away at commercial. And you know that Connor's gonna be locked in here for the final 10 minutes. Tip by Harwell, just high. As loose puck makes its way over to Liam Anderson, tried to split the defense, couldn't get it out. Gage throws on the brakes and now gets it over to Austin Thompson. They try to go ahead for Kirkby. This puck was knocked down with almost a high stick, but the referee says to play on. Here, under eight minutes left to go in the third period. Gates fanned on it partially. But does a good job of sealing his man off legally to maintain possession for the Black Bears. Thompson just steers it in softly against the boards. Allows the forecheck to get set up. Tetro over to Woolley. Backhander denied by Weber. And now Ivoshkin to Anderson. Off the wall, Anderson comes in. Ivoshkin sealed off, and Tetro lays a good hit on Anderson and brushes off Ivoshkin. Smith waits at the line for Ivoshkin to touch up and throws it right back in. Shots 37, Binghamton, 27, Danbury, but where it matters the most, 3-2, to two, favoring the Black Bears. Good stick lift on Ivoshkin right there. Will not allow him to skate into the offensive zone with the puck. Now Scully matched up against the Russian winger. And even get over for Swojewski. Zinchenko cross ice over to Swojewski. Intercepted by Schultz. It was too far ahead of the Danbury player. And now we feel like we've fallen into a little bit of lull with all that action for a little bit, Cole. Yeah, Brooks, I'm going to fall asleep if this keeps up. Jesse Anderson skates in, has it on his backhand, throws on the brakes, waits for some friends. Weber fires a slap shot, and Murray hangs on for a whistle. Here with 6.23 left to go in the third period. I've noticed that Liam Murray is very reliant on that glove. He snares the puck out. He gets it to be a little flashy, but not as confident with his blocker. Really looks to try to make those glove saves wherever he can. Fletcher tries to go between the legs of Ruiz. Instead, it makes its way up to Cunningham. He tries a soft lift over the stick of Stone, but Stone 
knocked down to the ice in the Zamboni, excuse me, in the locker room corner, top right corner of your screen. And now Stone through the middle to Fletcher. Fletcher's gonna turn on the Jets, but not before he has the puck knocked off his stick by the Danbury defender. Brown faked the heavy hit and just went for the light shove instead. Got Fletcher just to dump the puck in deep. Vaughn holds it in at the blue line. Creates an extra possession for the Black Bears if they can get over to it. Ray on the forecheck against Brown. Spins off a hit and Murray has to just cover up, sensing the pressure. Yeah, Binghamton getting that puck to the net. When you throw the puck at the net, good things will always happen. So keep getting that pressure, Brooks. Keep throwing it at the net. Get this crowd on its feet a few more times before this night's over. As the top line, Kirk B. Yates and Thompson with Dakota Bond and Dan Stone take the ice. Kirkby wins the puck over to the wall. And now Thompson with it. Plays it back up to the line. Stone does hold it in. Work it back down low for Thompson. Open man was Gavin Yates. Now Thompson sealed off against the wall by the latest Danbury goal scorer, Connor Woolley. Picking up his eighth of the season. Scully pulls it out of the corner. Kirkby's lost his stick in the process. Tries to pick it up down low. Thompson, Bond give and go, and no shot will come of it. Thompson right on the doorstep waiting for the trailer, Bond, to come in and join the play. Scully sent down to the ice by Tyson Kirkby. And they try a stretch pass, Harwell with some words, and a little bit of pushing and shoving going on behind the play. And Keep your head cool, Kirkby, stay in this game. They still need you for the last five minutes. That'll get the crowd re-energized a little bit. It had grown silent as Danbury had been the latest goal scorer. Audette calling for the stretch pass. Not gonna be icing, but it's offsides instead. 4.33 left to go. And... Brooks, I don't like that, that it was a clean hit by Kirkby and then Harwell was looking for a response. Shouldn't have to answer for yourself if you make a clean hit. All right, we're gonna go to immediate timeout. 4.33 left to go. Back with you after this. Advancements in new clinical therapies are made possible by heroes like you. Velocity Clinical Research is looking for volunteers to participate in clinical research studies. Compensation is provided. There's a Velocity location near you on Old Vestal Road in Vestal. Learn more about participating and becoming a Velocity Medical Hero today. Whether you're a high school or college athlete or a weekend warrior, Guthrie is the area's premier sports medicine program, offering injury evaluation, concussion management, physical therapy, and more. With a full team of providers across New York and Pennsylvania offering same or next day appointments, Guthrie gets you back in the game as quickly as possible. Call the Guthrie Sports Medicine team today at 866-GUTHRIE or learn more at guthrie.org slash sportsmed. Well, crowd got energized during that media timeout. It's an offensive zone face off coming up for the Black Bears here. 4.33 left to go. Dan Barry does trail by one. However, they do have the latest goal in tonight's game. And the crowd was energized because, Brooks, you said it was going to be a task to find the collision hard hit of the game, but it belonged to Tyson Kirkby. Yeah, right before we went to commercial, too. So great work by the video team getting that highlight pulled early. Or right, not early, on time because that play had just happened. Dan Barry now coming back the other way. McKittrick out wide. We'll dump it in, Mack and Anima sees it in his mitt and hangs on, and this will be a face-off in the Black Bears' end. Dirt ball reads is what we used to call those back in the baseball days. Brooks, nice pick by Connor, Mack and Anima looked like a first baseman, but let's stick with hockey. I shouldn't be jumping to baseball. There's a lot of Black Bears on the ice right now. Yeah, well, with last change, sometimes you don't know if you're coming on or you're going off. Yeah, but they had like seven or eight there for a second, Brooks. Ruiz wins it back to Tetro. He holds it in at the blue line. 
Over for Cunningham. Throws it towards the net, looking for a tip from Ruiz, and McEnanima hangs on. Got to be careful with number 19 in orange and white. He'll sneak up on you. We know he can score. We've seen it way too many times, and he gets that stick, gets a tip on that puck, and it could spell disaster for the guys in green and black. Ruiz now with 18 goals on the season. He had a power play goal at the beginning of this period that was reviewed. And believe the officials made the right call. Centering pass through the skates of Ruiz. A shot from Scully wide. Tetro playing it down low. Schultz first man to it. Trying to dance around Ruiz. And Ruiz poked it away from the former captain. But now Ivoshkin steers it out on the backhand. Gets out of harm's way temporarily. Look out though. Danbury quick on the re-entry. Weber impeding progress up at the blue line. Does a good job to allow his teammates to complete the line change. Ruiz will go off on a line change. I'm sure we will see him soon. That'll be his final rest of the night. Weber, though, turns it over to Ratcliffe against the kick plate. Over to Brown. Slaps it down low. Schultz sticks his stick out to slow it down a little bit. Stoichevsky knocked down to the ice legally. And Fletcher picks up the rebound with 3.15 left to go. Fletcher makes sure he gets to the red line before he throws it down the length of the ice. Black Bears don't want an offensive zone draw on their end if they can help it. Puck behind the net, played up for Audette. One touches it for Stoichevsky, cross corner dumping. This is the Danbury that we've seen so far this season. Sin against the wall, Zinchenko and Bond. Taking some peaks down the ice, Liam Murray staying put. Logar at the red line. And Binghamton returns the cross corner dump in this time. Murray calling for everybody to settle down on his side. Line changes being rolled for Dan Barry. Door has not opened yet for Murray. Starts to take some head turns. But look out, Harwell comes in, tries, and he scores on the back end. Got it behind Mack and Anima, and it's three to three with 2.24 left to go. Just snuck one right by Mack and Anima, and we've seen this one before, Brooks. The Danbury Hattricks come all the way back from down by two this time to tie it up in the late stages of the third. Here it is on your screen. It's Harwell fighting by Stone and just chips it right over the blocker of Mack and Anima. We got a brand new puck game. I would have said ball game, but you know. You can say ball game. It's. It the point is the same. So now 2.24 left to go. We find ourselves tied at three. Now Ratcliffe skating into the offensive zone. He has his shot blocked. Thompson and Kirkby along with Yates come over. Tipped. Loose paint and covered up by Murray. How did that puck not go in? I want to see that one again as Liam Murray used every every inch of his six foot five frame to get that. Kirkby comes over the blue line, sees Yates. Yates goes at Thompson crashing to the net and Murray just stands his ground. But a full effort from this group that was up three on two. So a timeout has been called. And the referee signaling that it was Danbury that made the call. An interesting time for Billy McCreary to use his timeout here. And instead of now, uh, he gets to set up his defense the way he wants to, but now Binghamton also gets to set up their offense the way they want to in their offensive zone, Danbury's defensive zone. So interesting, interesting, interesting moves. So 2.01 left to go. We're tied at three. Danbury with three third period goals. And Binghamton with one. It is Nikita Ivashkin who has the only goal for Binghamton in this period. This is an offensive zone faceoff, though, coming up for the Black Bears. See if they can make anything happen. Yeah, they've let some magic go to Danbury. Now they need some magic on their own side. Send this place into a frenzy. Kirby wins the faceoff back. Yates slaps it down low for the Black Bears captain. He draws a crowd, and it's pinned up against the wall. Thompson trying to shake it out. Now Kirkby 
Still dancing around with it. And he reverses it back over Thompson. Waiting for it. He's pinned by Brown. Brown and LaBelle, two heavy bodies. Tall in stature and in size. Throwing some pucks around. And then Danbury tries to clear. This is shot down the length of the ice. This is icing against the hat tricks. Brown had lost his stick in that process back when the puck was in the away uh, locker room tunnel corner. So a minute 22 left to go. Now Coach Sherwood will get to his choice of whatever line he wants. It's gonna be a bit of a mishmash on the defensive end. He'll put Shulton Oliveri, his two offensive minded defensemen with the Anderson Smith and Ivashkin line. So a move here by Coach Sherwood for more offense. Ivashkin throws it off the mask, Schultz. Can't hold it in, one-on-one, -on -one, Harwell with Oliveri. Harwell throws it, and it's kicked out by Mack and Anima into the corner. Smith over to the rebound, knocked away by McKittrick, and Jesse Anderson picks up the loose change with one minute left to go here. And the third period brought to you by our friends over at BJ's Wholesale Club. Schultz uses a legal pick on Cunningham to allow Ivoshkin to gain the zone, but now McKittrick comes back the other way. Cunningham flies in and scores over the shoulder of McEnanima with 45 seconds left to go. It's a four goal frenzy for Danbury here and 45 seconds remain in the Black Bears home game point streak. Just a howitzer of a shot from Corey Cunningham. That top line for Danbury does it again. The Prince George British, Col British Columbian native in only his 12th game played, has 10 goals, now adds an 11th, he has a goal a game pace, and Binghamton slowly running out of time here. We'll see how quickly Coach Sherwood has the yank on Connor McAnanima. Thompson chips the puck deep, McAnanima has vacated the net up at the line, Ratcliffe could not get it out of the zone on first try. Thompson coming into Linda Hand, and now John Scully all the way from his goal line, lifts it up into the air, this will be wide, and it's icing. No, they say it's tipped. Okay, quick re-entry, back the other way. Clock stays running. Binghamton has a timeout if they can get a whistle. Kirkby shoves it in on the backhand. Binghamton's gonna have to chase it around. Tetro slaps it, 10 seconds left. Oliveri holds, Rister, high riser. And five seconds left. Stone over to Yates. Two seconds, Yates throws it towards the net and the horn sounds. And that'll be the end of tonight's contest. Danbury storms back, a four goal frenzy in the third period. Leaves the crowd speechless as the Black Bears prepare to skate off of the ice here tonight. Liam Murray picks up his second win of the season. Both are against the Black Bears and the 21 game point streak at home has come to an end here tonight. Black Bears outshoot Danbury 39 to 32, but don't get the goal that they were looking for late in the game to extend their lead or give the lead back or tie the game. So Binghamton will skate into the locker room, hopefully flush this one down the toilet as soon as possible because they have to come back and take on these same hat tricks tomorrow night at 7 p.m. We're gonna take a timeout, come back with the La Quinta and in Sweets post game show, everybody. 4-3 the final, Danbury steals one here in Binghamton tonight. 4-3, Patrick's win over the Black Bears. Don't go anywhere, folks. More coming up after this. Are you ready to take your billiards game to a whole new level? Dragon Billiards Instruction and Pro Shop has everything you need to impress your friends and crush your opponents. American Q Sports certified coach Kim the Dragon Young is now accepting new students. From novices to pros, the Dragon helps you find your best game with in-person or online instruction available worldwide. Need help with stance, stroke, or alignment and aiming? We've got you covered. Looking for advanced cue control techniques and trick shots? No problem. Follow us on Facebook at Dragon Billiards Instruction and Instagram at Dragon Billiards Kim for free daily tips and drills, upcoming tournaments and events, as well as exciting contests and giveaways. Subscribe on Patreon for personalized video content. Visit our online pro shop for the lowest prices on the highest quality pool cues, accessories, and Dragon Billiards gear. Dragon Billiards Instruction and Pro Shop, breathing fire into your game.
Well, if you left early, you would have missed it. Danbury storms back and scores three goals unanswered in the final 10 minutes of play. Here tonight, Connor Woolley, Chase Harwell, and Corey Cunningham, along with Johnny Ruiz, who got hat tricks on the board with the power play goal to start the period, score four goals in the third period, and a lot of people exiting the arena very unhappy tonight, Cole. Yeah, it's a story we've seen way too many times. Binghamton with a big lead against Danbury. Going into the final frame, Danbury storming back. This time, a new twist added to an age-old fairy tale as Binghamton doesn't even earn a point. They don't get two extra frames, and Danbury is gonna have a very nice night here in the 607. Teams will be back at it tomorrow night at 7 p.m. for Mascot Mania. Expecting a big crowd, so go ahead and get your tickets at Binghamton Black Bears. Dot com. Got the Rocco J. Testani, Budweiser, three stars of tonight's game. And let's go ahead and talk about him. Uh, the man who tied the game up at three from Danbury is Chase Harwell. The third star, Binghamton's Nikita Ivashkin, does get the second star with a pair of goals in tonight's game. Ivashkin, the only player on either side to have a multi goal performance. And the first star, the game-winning goal with 45 seconds left. Corey Cunningham picking up his 11th goal of the season. So, Rocco J. Testani, Budweiser, three stars of the game. Harwell from Danbury. That's Chase, third. Ivoshkin, second from Binghamton. And Cunningham, first from Danbury. Final count of shots on goal, 39 for the Black Bears. And 32, excuse me, 32 for Danbury. Binghamton only manages 10 shots on goal in the third period. And I say only 10. Danbury didn't do too much more. They only grabbed 11 because they had 21 coming into the period. So Binghamton does not score after the first period in tonight's contest. And Danbury score, excuse me, Nikita Ivoshkin did score in the third. I got ahead of myself. Danbury scores four goals in the third period. Remember when I said third periods hadn't been good for the Black Bears? Well, time to take a trip down memory lane very quickly. Here, three goals in the third on January 12th at the Danbury Ice Arena. Go back to New Year's Eve. Danbury scores two goals in the third period. Go back to the 30th. Danbury did not score. So you kind of get my point a little bit that the third period had not been too kindly to the Black Bears in recent history against this team. And they don't take their best period, the second period against the Hattricks, and capitalize. They had a 2-0 lead going into the third period. Saw Danbury get on the board. Immediate response by Nikita Ivoshkin. They didn't lay down. But Danbury does score the next three goals to make it 3-2, 3-3, to two, three to three, and 4-3. to three. The final two goals come two minutes and 20 seconds apart from each other. Uh, before we send it off into the night, Cole, let me get your final thoughts here on Friday. Well, my final thoughts is I can't believe it happened again, Brooks. Binghamton surrendering the lead to Danbury. But like we said last time we met on f last Friday, last year's team, tomorrow is already lost. This year's team, I expect them to come out with a big jump tomorrow and to keep their foot on the gas pedal for a full 60 and not give any corners to this Danbury hat trick squad. So, obviously, it's a thing that uh, the coaching staff is going to have to talk about, players going to have to talk about, is they are going to have to solve how to stop this multi-goal lead comeback against Danbury. It's not like it's against everybody. It's, it's just Danbury. I think it is worth mentioning. It is something that they have to address and talk about. Last week, same thing happened on Friday night. Binghamton came back and won in regulation, even though they just suffered a regulation loss, their third of the season. They now are 19, 3, and 6 on the year, 62 points in the FPHL. Cole, why don't you go ahead and read the out-of-town scoreboard before we send it off into the night here? 
Well, we know the final score here in Binghamton. Danbury defeats the Binghamton Black Bears 4-3. to three. Over in Elmira, the River Sharks take care of business, defeat the Watertown Wolves 4-2 to two in Kyle Powell's Elmira debut. Columbus still leads the Withville Blue Ridge Bobcats 2-1. to one. Carolina and Mississippi continue their slug matches. Carolina leads 5-4 to four in Winston-Salem. Port Huron has tripled their goal count to three, while Motor City just has the one as they look to be entering the third period. And Baton Rouge, once again, not playing tonight. Thank you, Cole. That is our final look at the out-of-town scoreboard of the night. We will have that again tomorrow during our pregame show, intermission reports, and La Quinta Inn and Suites postgame show. La Quinta Inn and Suites, the perfect place to play in your next day to the southern tier, located at 581 Harry L. Drive in Johnson City, not too far away from our friends over at the BJ's Wholesale Club. Actually, it's just right across the street. So go check out BJ's Wholesale Club, getting ready to open up and you can stay at the La Quinta next time you plan a trip here to go see the Black Bears play. Third regulation loss of the season. Everybody remain calm. The panic button is nowhere to be found. Trust me. I'm around the team probably more than anybody is, and there's not an ounce of panic in that room. They'll be back tomorrow, and I believe that what Cole said will ring true. They will come out guns a blazing ready for the rematch on Saturday night. For Super Producer Peter, Josh, and his entire video team, and my partner Cole Parenti, my name is Brooks Hill, everybody, signing off until tomorrow night where we will talk to you for Mascot Mania, a part of the Triple Cities Family Dental Program.